Hello everybody and welcome to Minecraft Hardcore. We have managed to stay alive for over 2000 days. So, I guess playing it safe, being careful and frankly being a bit of a chicken really works. Now in this video I have put together all of the progress we have made since passing 1000 days and we have done a lot which means this is a bit of a long one. So grab yourself a big bowl of popcorn, put it on in the background while you're cleaning house or cooking dinner or simply let my soothing voice lull you to sleep. However you want to watch it is entirely up to you as long as you enjoy it. And with that in mind, let's get started. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now in the previous episode we built our magnificent castle you can see behind us and I must say I am extremely proud and very very pleased with how it turned out. It is looking absolutely phenomenal on the outside but inside is still a whole lot of nothing going on. Now that's something we'll get to in future episodes because this is going to be a monster job and right now I am not really in the mood to get into it. Now it seems that this has become something of a habit for me and I promise in the future I will go down to all the houses down in the village and build them some interiors as well. But not today. And we're going to start off today by adding a little bit of life not only to the castle grounds but also to the water features on the side of the staircase leading up to our beautiful bridge and we're going to be adding some fish so let's get going first things first we are heading out to the coral reef which is just over this mountain and we're going to catch ourselves a bunch of tropical fish to add to those ponds but in order to do that, we're going to be needing a few buckets. Now I want to add about four to each pond, which gives us a total of 12 buckets that we shall require to catch 12 fish, four for each one of the three ponds. So let's get down there, let's jump into that beautiful briny blue water and go grab ourselves some tropical fish. And we have found our first candidate, but these fish seem to be a lot more scarce than I would like them to be. I thought they would be plentiful, but except for pufferfish, I am actually really struggling to find some marine life around here. But finally, we have collected all 12 of the fish that we require, so we can head back to base, pop these guys in the water, and get on with the rest of today's program. That is, of course, if I head in the right direction first, which I think is that way. I've only three more rockets. Let's hope we make it. And yes, we made it. We've restocked our rockets and it's time to pop our fish into the pools. Now we're going to start over on this side. I'm going to chuck four in here. Then I've got four that I'm going to put on the other side of the stairs and finally four in the palace fountain. And I'm going to try and randomize these guys as much as I can. But it seems we might have a bit of a problem because I have actually previously stocked this pond. But all I can find of those fish that I've put in here is a single solitary sad salmon. Which means they are somehow getting out of the water, landing on stone and dying. As I don't think fish in a bucket can despawn. Now if that is the case then I see a bleak future for our new acquisitions. But we'll pop them in here and see if they survive. And it seems to be the same sad story up here in the castle pond. We've got one single salmon left in the water. So let's pop these guys in here. Let's see if they survive. And of course we're going to do our best to make sure that our pets stay alive. But I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about taking care of fish. So we've got all of those guys in here. Let's hope they stay on the water this time and they stay alive. And there goes the salmon. And that is why you guys don't survive. And we've already got one of the new fish being a total nitwit. Um, let's see if we can save him. I think let's grab a bucket of water. Let's see if we can get that poor guy's no, too late. So I've added a bunch of water to the fountain just to see if we can get these guys to actually survive. And I hate what it's done to the aesthetic, but if it helps my fish stay alive, maybe it's worth it. I'll leave them for a while and come back and check later. 
But now that we're done with the fish stories, it's time to take a look at this village. And what do we see? Or shall I ask, what do we not see? We don't see any villages. And I think I finally figured out why. These poor people have no food. And that is what we aim to rectify today. I've been scouting out the areas around the town, looking for the perfect place to create a farmland. And I have selected this area. Now there's only one problem, and that is that this is holy ground. And by holy ground, I mean the ground is covered in massive, deep holes. Holes that can cause significant damage to farm equipment and personnel should they fall into it. Which means a cover-up operation is in order. So let's get busy with Operation Farmland. And we've done a lot of work, we've plowed, we've planted, we have covered up. And the area is looking a lot more manageable now. As you can see, we've got some farmland going over there. We've got some flattened out areas where we're going to be putting some buildings. And I think once we're done, this is going to look absolutely phenomenal. But first things first, farms this size require a lot of wheat seeds. And if I can stop throwing my rockets around, perhaps I can harvest some wheat collect some seeds and go plant them in the new fields. And with the planting done, it's time to get building. And we're going to start right over here where we are going to build a forge. And every forge requires a blacksmith and a blacksmith requires a house, which is what we'll be building on top here. So we've gathered up our materials. Let's start building a forge and a blacksmith's house. And the forge and the house is done and we've added in a bunch of details such as hot coals to smelt the metal, an anvil to bang it into plowshares and swords, we've got a grindstone, we've got a table and inside we've got absolutely nothing because I haven't done the interior yet. However, if we move just up the hill towards the blacksmith house and we walk past this window, take a peek inside, we'll see absolutely nothing as well. But we'll get to that eventually, I promise. But for now, everything is looking really, really great. And we've still got a lot of work to do, I won't lie. But so far, so good. As you can see, we've still got the massive open well over here where anybody can fall in very easily because we haven't added a grate yet. And in general, I think this area is just missing a few trees, a little bit of growth, perhaps some bushes, some grass, and most importantly, a farmhouse.
And with our beautiful farmhouse completed, I've been planting a bunch of trees all over the place. As you can see from the area back here, I've planted a few acacia trees. I've planted a bunch of oak trees all around the road. And I think this area is coming along beautifully. I've also put down a bunch of accessories such as barrels, flowers, and of course, some hay bales. As it would only make sense that there would be a lot of hay bales in the farming district. And then over here in the storage area, we've also added a few hay bales, some chests, some barrels, and around the corner, we have added a bunch more flowers, a bunch more trees, some bushes, and this place is really starting to come alive. And most importantly, we have added a grate over the open well over here, and that should prevent anybody like me from falling in and plunging to our doom. And we're still waiting for one or two trees to grow. But overall, I am very, very happy with the progress that we're making over here. The fields are growing, the forge is smoking, but there's something over here that I want to do. And that is to build a cistern over here next to the dam wall, because my intention was from the start to have the water cascading over the top and into an aqueduct, a cistern or something of the sort. So let's dig out the area over here then we'll line the walls with some stone we'll put up a nice little wall at the top and finally we'll open up the dam and have the water flowing freely down into the cistern and finally it is done the sluice gate is open and the water is flowing but now it's time to get practical because we have all of this beautiful wheat in the fields behind us but we have no way of making it into something that the townsfolk can actually eat. So we are going to be building a windmill where we can grind that wheat into flour to bake bread for the hungry, hungry townsfolk. So let's get busy and build a windmill. And our windmill is complete and looking absolutely spectacular. I really do love the way that this has turned out. And this is in fact the first windmill that I have ever built in Minecraft. And as an added bonus, we actually have an interior for our windmill. We've got some wheat in here, we've got some barrels and we've got the grindstone which is going to grind the wheat into flour. And as you can see, we've got the shaft going all all the way up to the prop shaft at the top which will spin around the grindstone and of course grind the wheat and i really really do love my windmill it has turned out absolutely spectacular now there's a lot of wheat out here and there's going to be a lot of grinding happening so we have to ask ourselves what is better than a windmill two windmills of course
and the second windmill is complete and this farming area is really starting to grow on me and down here we have added a dock i've been a busy boy and as you can see we have wheat all over the place we have barrels we have the dock and i have gone absolutely bonkers with a bone meal and it gives us a nice overgrown feeling because we are out in the country, of course. And over there, we've got a little cart that they use to transport the wheat. We've added a few scarecrows in the fields. And overall, we are just about done with this area. And as one last surprise, if we step inside the farmhouse, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we actually have an interior. We've got a living room. We've got a kitchen over here where the hungry farmhands can eat. And then... We've got some bunks over here where they can get some rest after a long day in the fields. And with that, I think our job here today is pretty much done. But before we go, check out my nice shag carpet over here by the fire. And what I thought was going to be a quick simple build turned out to be a lot more work than I anticipated. Just looking over the farmlands with a backdrop of the castle on the mountain behind it, this area is looking beautiful i think this is probably one of my favorite builds to date and these windmills really just put the cherry on the cake i am absolutely in love with the country life over here and the country life loves me and with everything in place we can now start thinking about getting in some villages because we are finally able to feed them and looking at the interior of the cozy farmhouse I think we have done a great job. Any farmhand will be lucky to come and live here. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. Now over the past few weeks we've been doing a lot of work expanding our village and it is looking absolutely gorgeous. We've got the beautiful castle, the magnificent cathedral and the village itself isn't looking too shabby either. In addition to that, in the last episode we built ourselves a farm along with two mighty windmills to grind the grain into flour to bake bread to feed the hungry hungry villagers. But while we've spent a lot of time taking care of the village, we haven't spent much time taking care of ourselves. And that is important as well, which is why in this episode, we are going to upgrade the shiny baubles we wear on our head and feet, and we are going to get some netherite gear. Now I already have a little bit of netherite gear, but it is time to convert it all, which means all of our armor, all of our tools, and all of our secondary tools as well. But first things first, we will need some ancient debris. And that of course means I have to go back to the place that I detest. I have to go back to the nether. And now that I'm here, I have to find a place suitable for mining because so far I haven't had much luck with that. There is lava everywhere and I'm starting to think that this nether spawn is just absolutely terrible. But down into the depths we go, and if you're wondering why we are watching all of this in a third person cinematic view, it's simple. I paused my OBS while I was taking a break, and I never unpaused it. Which means the only footage I have of this entire expedition is all from my replay mod. And now that that's been cleared up, we can mine ourselves down to Y level 15, where we shall be using 3 stacks of TNT to blow the nether to pieces, and find some of that sweet, sweet ancient debris. And if you don't know how mining for ancient debris works, it's quite simple. You go down to Y level 15 in the nether, you mine yourself a massively long tunnel, pack it full of TNT, set it off, and watch the magic happen. So first things first, we are mining our tunnel. We are packing it with TNT, and we have three stacks of the stuff, so that should give us plenty of boom. And once this is done, we'll set it off and hope it uncovers tons and tons of ancient debris. So, first things first, let's ignite the fury and watch the flames do its work. And so far, the lava situation doesn't seem too bad. As long as it's not pouring from the ceiling, I am quite happy. And I think I spot our first piece of ancient debris. Now we just need a ton more. And we can collect our spoils. We've got a few pieces sitting right here. There's a few more down the tunnel. 
And hopefully, once we're done with our three stacks of TNT, we'll have enough to convert all of our armor, all of our gear, into netherite versions. But first things first, we need to collect what we have, and so far we have got three pieces. Of course, that doesn't even make one netherite ingot, so we're going to have to go bigger. We have to do some more mining. And that of course means blowing the entire underside of the nether to absolute smithereens. And we're digging tunnels, we are placing TNT, we are blowing giant holes in the bowels of this foul place and reaping some rich rewards. But with all of our TNT spent, we have managed to gather 28 pieces of ancient debris and that will give us 7 netherite ingots. And it seems that something has been messing with our minecarts in our smelter. I think it might have been an enderman, but let's pop these bad boys in here. Let's smelt them down into netherite scraps and then we can make some ingots. Of course, we've still got three netherite scraps in our ender chest. We didn't manage to find a fourth, so those will stay there for now. And while we were in the nether, we gathered up all of the gold nuggets we could possibly lay our hands on because we are out of gold. We have spent it all making golden apples to cure zombie villages and get some awesome deals. But we have got over a stack of gold ingots right here. That should be more than enough to make our netherite ingots and also leave us with plenty to spare. And now that we have our gold, we can go collect our netherite scraps and make some ingots. There we go, 28 netherite scraps. We've got some more gold in the smelter as well. And all of this should give us seven shiny netherite ingots, which means we can convert seven pieces of armor or tools into netherite. So let's grab that crafting bench, look up some netherite, and there we go, seven pieces of netherite. And by sheer coincidence, we have seven netherite upgrade smithing templates as well. Although I think we probably need to make a few more of those. I don't want to use my last one because I don't want to go to another bastion to find a new one. And we have our netherite. We have our smithing templates and it's time to get some netherite gear. We're going to start off with our boots. We've upgraded all of our gear as much as we possibly can at the moment, which means this should be some pretty decent stuff. Next is our helmet. There we go. And then our chest plate, of course. And with that done, we are absolutely covered in debris. We can also do some of our tools. Let's do the hoe as well, because that requires some serious dedication. There we go. And with that, we've got almost everything converted to netherite, but I want to check out my shiny new netherite armor. Let's get that on there and let's have a look and see what that looks like. And yes, Fungosaurus is looking battle ready indeed. And this should go a long way towards keeping us alive just a little bit longer. We've got the sword, we've got the pickaxe. But now it's time to do some work. And I've been looking around, thinking about which area of these lands I want to expand next. And also, what am I going to build? Now, there are plenty of options. We can go over to that side, but there's a big lake in the way. Behind the village, there's a jungle and some mountains. But over here, we have some prime real estate. And I've been looking at the terrain, and it seems to me that there is a river begging to flow through here. It could start over here with a little bit of a lake and then wind its way around these outcroppings and finally into the big lake at the bottom. And I think that would be absolutely spectacular. In addition to that, I've got a few ideas of what to do with the area in between. And then for our big build, I've got an idea on how to incorporate the river. But first, we need to prepare the land. And I've had to put the work on hold for two reasons. Firstly, these unscrupulous scallywags have appeared out of nowhere and decided to attack me. So while I'm waiting for them to kill their own leader, I will tell you about the next problem I'm facing. As you can see, I have reached rock bottom. And by saying that, I mean I have reached a rock bottom, which is going to take forever to dig up which makes me think I need to go and fetch my beacon. At the moment, it's sitting at the bottom of the world doing absolutely nothing productive. So once I've taken care of these guys, just one more remaining, I can go and fetch my beacon, which will make digging out all of this rock 
a lot easier. And so down into the depths we plunge to go fetch our shining beacon and of course its base. And it's powering down which means we are almost done collecting all of the blocks and all we have to do is collect the beacon itself. And with all the blocks collected we can move it up topside to where it will actually do a bit of good. But I wonder am I able to fly up straight through this hole to the surface as a shortcut. Let's see. Here we go. Oh no 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 no. Okay. Um, that might have been a little bit stupid. That could easily have killed me. And I think I need to start making some much much wiser decisions if I am to survive. But survive I did and it's time to build the base for our beacon. We've got all of our blocks and we need to start off with a 9 by 9 first layer. And now we power up the beacon. Let's just pop some iron in there, get some haste going, some haste too. And this should make our work go a lot faster. So with that all done, let's get back to it. And our area preparation is complete. We've got the river all dug out from the big lake at the bottom to the little lake at the top. We've added some sandy riverbeds, some bridges, and of course, we've added some roads, which means it is time to start building. And I've got three separate builds planned for today, two little ones and then a bigger one. And the first one involves our beautiful farmhouse. And I took a poll among the farm workers. I promise you there are farm workers somewhere. And not all of them wishes to live in a big communal farmhouse, which brings us down to this area over here, where we are going to build two smaller farmhouses for those who crave their independence. And our two smaller farmhouses are done, complete with a pig pen, a few food patches, and it is looking absolutely beautiful. Which brings us to our next build, and that's going to happen where our beacon happens to be sitting right now, which means we need to take it down and then add another piece of this land's long forgotten history. That's right, we are building a ruin right on top of that hill. The remnants of an ancient mansion that might have belonged to a long forgotten duke, earl or some other form of nobility. So let's get busy and let's add a little bit of history. And to be honest, I only added this rune because while I was planning, this hill looked very, very empty. And I'm very glad I did, because it is looking amazing. But now it's time to get to today's main event. And it's going to involve all of this land around me, and all of the land going right down to the big lake at the bottom. Because we are building a sawmill. But first things first, if we fly over this area, you might notice that we are missing something of vital importance to a sawmill and that is of course some trees. This area is looking very barren and once we're done planting a few saplings, we'll get straight into it and build our sawmill.
and the main structure of our sawmill is complete and it is looking absolutely fantastic. As you can see, we've built a giant water wheel which is going to be powered by the river coming down from the lake at the top, flowing through here, driving the gears which moves the blade to saw the logs. And as you can see, we actually have a log on the tracks ready to be sawn in half. We've also got the building where we've got a little office at the bottom and at the top we have a room which I've not quite decided what to do with yet, but I'll figure it out in just a little bit. All in all, our sawmill is looking amazing, but I think perhaps it could do with a little detail. And detail we have. It is looking spectacular. As you can see right here at the top, we've got some prime logs for a very discerning customer ready to be processed. And over here, we have added just a little bit more detail, some lanterns, some barrels, and the whole operation is looking brilliant. Down here, we've got some planks that have already been processed and is ready to be taken to the market. We've got some cherry, some dark oak, some oak, and some spruce. And we have an interior, just look at that. And this is of course the foreman's office and there's all his records. Up top we have also done some work. It is the foreman's bedroom and he lives here as well as works here. He's a very dedicated man. He also keeps a few prize saplings up in his bedroom and just one or two more at the bottom. And the sawmill is pretty much complete. And if we take a quick stroll to the lands outside you will see that the forest is starting to come in. And now all we need to do is add some water to our river to drive our massive water wheel over here and get the sawmill working. But we'll get to that in just a minute. We also have a massive lumber yard over here filled with all the logs you could possibly want. We've got some acacia, some dark oak, some oak, some birch, and we've got a little bridge which spans over the river and we're going to quickly complete this bridge. So first things first, let's get some slabs down there and then we'll decorate it even further with a little bit of chiseled stone and this is starting to look magnificent. Next up, let's grab some stone walls and put those on both sides and then finally we'll finish it off with some spruce fence gates and the mechanics of spruce fence gates connecting to stone walls gives us a beautiful little curve all the way through. So there we go, our bridge is complete. But before we finish this build, there's something I need to do first. And that is to fulfill the promise I made at the beginning of this episode, to get full netherite gear. Because right now I still have an axe and a pickaxe which is still diamond, and that means I need to go back to the nether for more ancient debris. And here we go, this is the last of my TNT and hopefully this run will give me all of the ancient debris that I need. If it doesn't, I will need to go do some AFKing above my creeper farm, but hopefully that won't be necessary. So let's grab our flint and steel, let's light this sucker up and run for our lives! And off goes the TNT, let's see if we have hit pay dirt. Give a second to calm down and let's go see what's what. And straight away, we have some ancient debris right over here. And it seems that we have hit a pretty good vein. And we've got some up there in the roof as well as some more down here. And this is really turning out to be a very fruitful expedition. And finally, we have enough ancient debris, we can return home and leave this horrible place behind as we upgrade literally all of our gear to netherite from diamond. So here we are back home and let's go visit the boys. And while I'm here, I'm gonna add some armor trim to all of my netherite armor. I've been putting it off because I don't think it transfers from diamond armor to netherite and I didn't want to waste my smithing templates. But we're getting some awesome results and I think I like what I'm seeing. I'll go with this one, it looks simple and it sort of matches the armor trim I already have on my netherite leggings. And there we go, all of our armor has some trim on it and I want to see what we look like. And the results are amazing, just look at that. Have you ever seen anything so majestic? Full netherite armor, full netherite tools. And at this stage I had to come back because only during editing did I notice that, once again, I missed my axe. 
So here we go. We've got netherite, we've got a smithing template, and we have our last piece of diamond gear. There we go. It is done, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, all of my diamond gear has been upgraded. And I really do love the look of this armor trim. I also love the look of our new build. And we'll start off with the little farmhouses. Just look at that. Some happy pigs. A little garden for some food. And of course, a second house for some more villagers that can live here away from the noisy main house. Moving further along, we have a beautiful bridge over the river, which has now been filled. And just look at that sparkling water. If we go down to the big lake at the bottom, you will see it cascades down a majestic waterfall into the big lake. Of course, we also have our lumber yard where we have many, many logs waiting to be processed by our sawmill. We have some dark oak, we have some birch, some spruce, and of course, some regular oak and acacia. And it's all set against the backdrop of the beautiful ruins on top of the hill. Then of course, we have the sawmill itself and is giant wheel driven by the power of the river. Just look at that. And up top we have the rails. We have the saw blade sawing the logs in half. We have a few logs here yet to be processed and everything is looking absolutely fantastic. We've got some planks down here that have already been processed waiting to be taken to the market and sold for timber. And then as we move across the river over the bridge over here, we have our forest and the main source of all of this wood. And you can see some logs that have been cut down, some trees that have yet to be processed. And over here we have a cart, absolutely packed to the brim with some logs waiting to be taken to the lumber yard. And if we move over here, you can see there's an oak tree that has been cut down, still not processed yet. And back here we have a freshly cut spruce tree just waiting to be turned into a big log. We also have a few logs sitting right over here that needs to be loaded onto the cart and taken to the lumber yard. And if we move up the hill, you will see a little campfire with a big chunk of tasty meat roasting over the open flame where the workers can come sit, enjoy a little bit of warmth and enjoy a little bit of lunch. And finally, we are surrounded by millions and millions of trees. Okay, perhaps not millions, but quite a few trees. Now, in the previous episode, we did a lot of work around here. We built a forest, a sawmill, a few farmhouses, some beautiful ruins, and of course, a river. And everything is looking spectacular. Our village is also looking spectacular, although at this stage, I will admit that during construction, some of the contractors might have cut a few corners and left some things unfinished. But we are here to rectify that today. So, let's get to work. And in case you haven't picked up on what I'm trying to say yet, we are going to be working on some interiors today. And no, unfortunately, we're not going to be working on this particular interior today. I don't feel quite up to that yet, but we are going to be working on the interiors of all the houses and the big buildings down in the village. And I'm going to get some villagers into the village because at the moment it's feeling very empty and very dead. But to do that, I need some interior building supplies like some wool. And of course, some spruce wood. Plenty of this is going to be required because I want to make lots of decorations like barrels, composters, etc, etc. And the third thing that I'm going to be needing is a lot of clay. I want to put some pots everywhere. The new pots are beautiful and I think it's time that I start using them a bit more extensively. So let's get some clay and then let's melt that clay into some bricks so we can start using it to make some pots, flower pots, etc, etc. Here we go and let's get these puppies in there. And with all of that done, we are ready to get building so let's grab our shulker box full of interior supply goodies and let's get busy now the first piece of decorating that we're going to do isn't actually interior no it's this little piece over here that i have been neglecting week after week 
off to week and it's time to set that right so first things first let's get this stone out of the way here and then i'm going to need some dirt to fill it up with but i didn't bring any dirt with me so let's go find our dirt chest i think it's this one just grab a stack that ought to do and then let's just pop these five cobblestones into the cobblestone chest and then we can get back to doing a little bit of decorating right over here we're just going to fill this up with dirt for a start and then i'm thinking perhaps a little bit of a path here a tree might be nice and i think if we plant a tree here we can make a path going from the stairs of the cathedral to the other path and there we go we have dug out where we want to place the path now all we need is some brick slabs and some granite slabs we also have a fountain that we want to put in here and thanks to the magic of video editing we don't have to wait long at all and there we go is that not looking absolutely spectacular our path is in we've got our little fountain and everything over here including our tree is looking beautiful and that means that we can get started with the interior decorating and we're going to be starting with this house over here now as you can see there's absolutely nothing going on inside just yet and i don't really have any idea what i want to do here at the moment so i'm just going to start with my box of beds and here we go with said box of beds i've got a bunch of different colors in here and i'm going to start off with some lime beds i think the first one is going to go somewhere over there the next one maybe right here on the other side and then i've got a lovely orange bed and i'm gonna use that to make a big double bed on the other side next we need to replace the torches that was on the ground with some lanterns and then i'll add some end tables next to the beds here also known as barrels and let's get it in the right orientation there we go and then we need some greenery and for that we're going to be using some composters and we're going to be using some of the big pots that we have now and i'm going to put one in that corner and i think i'll put another one in the other corner and then we're going to use those to make some beautiful little indoor trees and we're going to turn these two end tables into a handy little desk and the desk of course also needs a little bit of decoration so let's get a flower pot on this end and you might have noticed that i've been rearranging some of the furniture just to make it fit a little better and to make it look a little nicer next up let's complete our trees with some flowering azalea leaves i've just got a dead bush in a flower pot on top of the pots and it does make a beautiful small tree over here we're going to put a cherry bonsai and then i think on the desk we'll have a beautiful little acacia bonsai and this room is looking great and over here we have a parrot that's been sitting here for who knows how long and I think it's time that he and I become friends. Hop on, buddy. And I'm going to introduce him to my house parrot because I think he needs a friend. And just look at the two of them getting along like a house on fire. They are really enjoying themselves and they enjoy the company. But for now, they have to sit down so I can get back to work. And we've made some great progress on this interior. It is pretty much done. So let's pop inside and take a look. And as you can see, the bedroom is completely finished, as is the rest of the house. Over here, we have a kitchen with some food ready to be cooked. We also have this area here that I'm not 100% sure if I want to add anything in here still. But we've got a table with some food on it. We've got the bedroom. And with that, this house is pretty much done. So let's move on to the next. And we have been a busy, busy boy. Just look at this, a full interior on this house. We've got some beds at the top, another little bedroom down there, and then we've got a beautiful kitchen down here. But wait, that's not all. Over in this little house over here, we have an interior as well. It's not as big as the others, but it is comfortable. It is cozy and it is looking really beautiful. And next up, the Mason's Guild. Now this is going to be a bit of a bigger build as we've got three floors, we've got four rooms, we've got two hallways and then of course we have the big hallway at the bottom where the masons are going to be working. So first things first, let's get some lanterns in here, get rid of the torches on the floor. I think this one needs to move over one in that direction and then we'll add one in this room. This is the tiniest room of the lot and a few more in the hallway. So one over here. 
and then perhaps one on the other end. And I think this is going to be a pretty big job. It'll take a lot of time, so it's time for some more editing magic. And with that, everything is pretty much done. I just want to change this picture because we already have King Graham on the other side of the hall. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. And then we can remove our composters. And I think all we still need to add is one painting above the stairway. So let's get some composters in there and let's put the painting up there. And with that, let's take a tour. Starting, of course, with the upstairs hallway looking beautiful. The upstairs rooms all cozy and ready to receive some masons who can do with a good night's rest. The second floor is also completed with a hallway looking spectacular. The rooms perhaps tiny but very comfortable. And then downstairs we have the grand hall where the masons will be doing their work. They can have meetings and they can assemble the mason council. And then you might notice I've blocked off the stairs going to the upper levels, just so we don't have any villagers running up there when we bring them in and latching onto a barrel or a decorative composter. And now it's time to bring in the masons and we're going to start off by laying down some rails. And then we got to go collect the people. So let's get our minecarts into the dispenser and one, two, three and a fourth villager and um, okay that one didn't pick up anybody perhaps i need to open the breeder and get some more people in the chamber but um i think i messed up because i did not close the loop and so all of these guys have gone directly to the mason's guild without getting zombified and cured and yes here they are all right that means we need to get them back into the chamber and then hopefully this time we can get them zombified. And here we go. All of them are in the chamber. We've got the rails all switched in the right direction. So we can press the button. And then Bob can get to work. I don't think Bob is seeing me. So let me just move over. Let's just move over here. And there we go. Bob is doing his job with plenty of aplomb. And then let's get... Mis oh, hang on a second. Ah. Bob brought his son to work. Isn't that cute? I didn't even know it was bring your son to work day. Hello, little Bobby. How are you doing? Bob, you have raised a beautiful child. Oh, quite rude of him. But anyway, let's get back to business. And all of our villagers have now been zombified, which means we can grab a splash potion of weakness. We can grab some golden apples and get curing them. So here goes potion number one. And I think I might have missed the two in the back and hit only the two in the front, which means I have wasted a potion. Yep, he's not having any of the apple. So I need to get another potion and another splash. And that just annoys me because now I have one less potion. Fortunately, they are easy enough to make and I've got plenty of spider eyes. So there we go. Our first four candidates are on the mend. And we've got our first four masons in the guild and they are doing splendidly. But it's time to get the next batch ready. I've opened up the breeder as I said earlier because I had it on pause for a while. And let's go get some more villagers. These guys are ready for the job. They can do with a little bit of training but we've got Bob to take care of all the training they need. Now before we send them up let's make sure we don't do the stupid thing we did earlier and send them straight out the door. There we go. That will send the first one to the correct block. And there he go. Oh, that's not what we wanted. Ah, goodness, that's not what we wanted either. Okay, let's get in there and, um, yeah. Hello, child. You're not what we wanted. And another child. I don't care. I don't know how many children I've got in this breeder. But let's hope that's the last of them. And in the next trip, we'll get some actual adults. Otherwise, we just need to wait for them to grow up. And there we go. We've got two adults. We've got two children. And as I said, we've got nothing to do until these two grow up and I can start zombifying them. So let's do something else while we're waiting for that. And I was just testing out the beds here. Very comfortable indeed. And nobody has made me any breakfast. That is really terrible. However, 
Let's take a look inside the Mason's Guild. And as you can see, all of these guys are absolute masters of their craft. But next up, we are going to tackle the interior of the Purple Parrot Inn. And here it is. Beautiful, magnificent, known throughout the lands for its delicious ale. And there's a skeleton here somewhere. Uh, there it is. Oh, goodness. Okay, this guy is serious. Let's take care of him. I think Mr. Iron Golem is going to be a bit late for this one. But there we go. Skeleton taken care of. Sir, you were very late. Now, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. We are going to be doing the interior for the Purple Parrot Inn. And I think down here we're going to have the bar area. Perhaps some tables and chairs where the people can sit and have a drink. But first things first, let's replace the torches on the floor with some lanterns. And we'll put one on this side, one in the middle, and one on the far side. So here we go. And okay, I don't think there's any way to center this one, is there? No, there is not. But I think the two of them will do the job just fine. So let's hit that magic edit button. And the bottom floor is complete. Looking very cozy indeed. And as you can see, we've got the bar area here where the bartender can serve the drinks. Howdy y'all, what'll you be having? Whiskey? Beer? I have no idea what that accent was and I'm very sorry. But it's time to get to work on the upper floors and the first thing I need to do is make some actual rooms because at the moment both of the upper floors are just big open plan rooms and I'm going to be building the rooms with some terracotta just to get a little bit of color variation and a bit of texture variation. So let's get this wall in here. I think that would be the first room. Now to decorate it. And we have done a lot of decorating indeed. All of the rooms are in place. All of the rooms have been decorated. And the second floor is complete. We've got the big room over here. A nice double bed. And this is one of the deluxe rooms, which comes with an armor stand, a bunch of paintings, and a closet. And you won't believe that the closet is completely empty, of course. The second floor is done. It's time to tackle the third floor. But first, a beer. And finally, ladies and gents, we have decorated all of the rooms. We have done the interiors and we've let a bunch of villagers out of the breeder. And you can see them milling about, going about their day and providing some real life to this beautiful village. Inside here, we have a very, very excited man who is enjoying his house very much. And who wouldn't be excited by this beautiful bedroom? In the kitchen, we can see the butcher cooking up some of his famous pulled pork. And then let's make our way over to the Masons Guild. Because in here, we have, count them, 10 Masons all ready to get to work. And we've opened up the stairway as well so they can get to the upper floors. We've added a few more decorations and everything in here is looking absolutely beautiful. If we go upstairs, you can see all of the rooms ready to receive the tired, tired Masons. Next up, let's make our way over to the Purple Parrot Inn and let's take a look at what is going on over there. First off, we have the bottom floor, which is the bar area and this is where the people sing and drink the night away. On the second floor, we've added a few more decorations, some barrels, some trees and we've got two rooms that are looking gorgeous. Over here we have a table where some of the guests can have a private dinner or just sit down and discuss some business deals. And then we have the top floor. I think we could do with a little bit more light in this corner, but I'm not going to be too bothered about it. Over here we have a tiny, tiny room, small but cozy. And over here we have another small room, not quite as tiny as the last, but over here ladies and gents, the biggest room at the inn and you can see it is beautifully decorated as well. Now, this video is actually the 50th video that I'm uploading to YouTube and as a result, it might be a little bit longer than the normal. However, it's for good reason because there is a lot of stuff that we're going to get done today and I think it's time to get straight into it. 
And I've decided not to do anything lazy like a base tour or anything like that. No, I'm going to be doing some actual work. And some of that work is going to involve this monstrosity over here. That's right, we're going to take care of the chicken yard, but we'll get to that a little later. First things first, we are headed to the place I despise. We are going back to the nether. And the reason I'm going back to the nether is so I don't have to go back to the nether. And if that doesn't make sense, well, let's get in there. I'll show you what I want to do and perhaps that'll clarify what I mean. And here we are. As terrible as always, I really do despise this place. And what we're going to be doing is actually taking down this nether portal. Because we are moving it up to the nether roof. So let's destroy this portal. And then we take the exact coordinates of this one and build it up on the roof. Now I know it doesn't need to be the exact same coordinates, but I want it as close as possible. And now the next thing we need to do is make our way up to the nether ceiling. And this place is absolutely perfect for it because we've got the nether rack going all the way up to the ceiling. So we don't need to take the risk of pillaring up and perhaps getting knocked down. So let's just dig our way up. And here we are. We are finally at the nether ceiling. And what we are looking for is a block that sits at 127. So... So far, we haven't found one yet. Let's see where this one goes. That is 126. Not high enough. And as it turns out, it is harder to find a block at 127 than I anticipated. I've been looking around for a while now. I haven't found anything yet. Oh, but this, this looks promising. What do we have here? Yes, 127. So we can get going. Now, I haven't gone up to the nether roof in any of my previous hardcore worlds for two reasons. Firstly, I haven't survived long enough to make it anything viable. And secondly, it is actually quite dangerous to do this. You can get stuck in the bedrock at the top. And as a result, you can actually suffocate. So I've got my ender pearl. Let's hope I have a good trip. Here we go. And wow, that was actually 100% painless. And we are up on the nether roof. So now what I want to do is find the right coordinates, put down my new nether portal, and then as we light it, it should lick up to the one in the tower, and it should take me home. Now I've already had one false start, I started putting down blocks in the wrong place. But fortunately, it was just two pieces of netherrack, and I think right here is the correct block. There we go. Now, just two to this side, I can put down my other piece of netherrack, and then we can build this portal. And once this is done, we will have safe passage to pretty much anywhere in the world. All we need to do is come up here, place down a nether portal in the right spot, and we will instantly have a portal to take us wherever we want to go. And here we are. We have lit the portal. Let's see if we have been successful now. Theoretically, if I go through here, I should emerge in the overworld in the tower. Let's see if I have managed to do this correctly. And absolutely perfect. Now it's night, so let's go sleep and we'll carry on after that. And it's time to put down our second portal and we're doing that in the end portal room over here in the stronghold. Now usually you would go up on the nether roof, you would figure out what the coordinates are that you want to correspond in the overworld and then you would build the portal on the roof and link up. Oh, goodness, go away, you vile little thing. Just get rid of this. There we go. And now before we were interrupted, I was saying usually you would go up to the roof and link up the portal from there to the overworld. However, I want this one in a very specific place. So we're going to do this in reverse. First, let's dig out a space for our portal right over here. And let's build a portal. Now I'm going to build this portal. Then I'm going to link through to the nether, take down the exact coordinates and then go up to the roof and build another portal on those coordinates like I did with the first one. So let's see where we come out. And not too bad. We didn't spawn in some lava in the middle of nowhere so we can take down this portal. But first, let's get the exact coordinates like we did with the first one. There we go. And then we'll take down this portal, head back up to the roof and build the portal there, linking it back down. And here we go with take two. Let's hope it's as smooth as the first time. 
And yes, it was. Now, I've seen people get stuck in the bedrock. I've had some trouble getting through myself once or twice, but both times this time was absolutely painless. So now all we need to do is find the right coordinates and then we can build the portal linking back to the overworld and we will have a quick passage between the village and the end portal. And here we go with any luck this should link up to the end portal below. So let's light the sucker, let's get in there and let's see if we have done this correctly. So here we go and we're holding thumbs. And absolutely brilliant, it is working perfectly. So far, it's been nothing but smooth sailing. And now we get to the reason why we are doing all of this. I want to build myself an Enderman farm and I can use it to get some valuable XP. I've got all the villagers down here and they do provide a lot of experience. However, I need something just a little bit stronger. The villagers are limited. They run out of stock. I run out of emeralds. Well, not really, because they're all dirt cheap. But we need somewhere where we can get unlimited experience. Now, I've pretty much got everything I need to make this Enderman farm, but I'm just grabbing a few pretty blocks in case I want to decorate it a little bit. Now, I've never built an Enderman farm before, so I am going to build the one from sportskeeda.com and I'll leave a link in the description, but I've built the iron farm before and the results were absolutely brilliant. So I'm hoping the Enderman farm gives me similar results. So we've got everything we need and we are heading back into the nether, but not into the nether, onto the nether. In fact, we are going to try out our transport system for the very first time. So let's see, we go through the portal, and then we just quickly hop over to the end portal and look at that seconds to travel from the one portal to the other and we are already in the portal room so nothing left to do except make our way into the end now as i said i've never built an enderman farm before but i do know it requires doing something absolutely terrifying especially for a hardcore world and that is plunge headfirst into the void now what i need to do is go down this water stream place blocks all the way down to level zero and oh no do, 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 do not fall yet all right so we're down here and we're placing some blocks now the first problem is i could fall out of the water stream into the void second problem is i can drown and i'm sure there has to be a better way of doing this and as it turns out, there is indeed a better way of doing this. My wife informed me after watching me build this thing for about five seconds that I need to get myself some lava. So we're heading back to the overworld. Let's just grab our water first. And we're going to get ourselves a bucket of lava. So let's make our way back to the portal. And we'll be back in just a second. And here we go, take two, we have some lava and we're gonna put this down right there. Now we just need to wait for it to make its way slowly down to the bottom of the void and then we'll put down a bucket of water next to it and the water will go down turning all of this lava into a pillar of cobblestone. And that should give us an easy way down and hopefully a safer way down because this is where I can very very easily lose this world and it looks like the lava is going to set all of those nasty leaves on fire which is welcome because I need to remove them anyway. And there we go I think that has reached the bottom so now we need to grab our water and I think I'm just going to put that down there and there it goes and oh no that was that was not what I was expecting I think I probably should have picked up my lava first but no harm no foul it is still making its way down it is turning the lava into cobblestone and this is going well so far so let's wait and i think the lava and the water is still making its way down but we're going to get started up here and the first thing i'm going to add is a bit of a safety rail because the last thing i want to do is fall down here so let's just get over here yeah you can see some of the lava still down there and there we go we have our safety rail so the next thing we need to do is go over here, put down some ladders, and now comes the absolutely terrifying job of going down this ladder and placing them as we go. So let's see if I can get down here onto the ladder without falling into the void. I think I'm on the ladder. Yes, I'm on the ladder. All right, now 
it seems to be a bit of a problem with the hitbox of the ladder. I can't place it on that block over there. I need to place it underneath that block. And then I can place the next ladder on top of that. So if this is the way we need to do it, that's the way we need to do it. And we've got a heck of a long way to go. And we are almost at the bottom. I hope we're on level 37. We need to make our way to level 0. So there is still a lot of way to ignore. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. That was terrifying. I'm going to land here. I'm going to calm down. And I'm just going to catch my breath. Regain my nerve. And then we can continue the ladder down. And we have finally reached the bottom. Now comes the tricky part of trying to put some leaves down there. And we've got the problem of that ladder's hitbox. So... I'm not sure how we're going to get the leaves on that block over there. Let me just... Oh, okay. Well, that'll work. And here we go. Level zero. And now we should be standing on level one. And the next part of the process involves building a bridge 200 blocks from the end island. And that is to prevent any of our spawns coming from the other side of the island. Now we've got all our stuff in our shulker box over here. Let's just get some more leaves because I'm going to need quite a few of them. Um, I'll grab some bricks as well and then we will put the... Crud. Okay, well that shulker box had everything I needed to complete this build and... I'm just going to build a little platform here, head back to the overworld and get some more materials. So I'm just going to build a few blocks out here. I need to build a few blocks out anyway. And this will provide a platform for me to land on when I get back. So let's just go, build it out a little bit, and then we'll head back to the overworld, get some more stuff, and come back. And I've lost one of my six shulker boxes in the process. Great fun so far. But aside from almost dying and losing one of my shulker boxes in the process, the rest of the build has gone off without a hitch. So we are just setting up everything we can over here and this part was a little bit tricky because the instructions were a little unclear. I wasn't sure where to put the trap doors or the carpets, but eventually we figured it out and once that was done, we were ready for the final part of this build. And the final part is, according to many, the hardest part of it all, and that is getting the endermite into position. Now, I've come up with a little plan over here. I'm going to put down rails. I'm going to put down a minecart over there. Then I'm going to stand at this end and throw the enderpearls at the other end. If an endermite spawns, I'll just push the minecart and he'll be trapped in it. But, um, yeah, okay, there's a few flaws to my plan, like I can't get past this minecart and I might need to remove this piece of rail at the end but let's see I'll throw the ender pearl turn around put down the minecart and trap the endermite and there we go we've got an endermite so we put down the minecart we push the minecart and the endermite is trapped however I have made another bit of a boo-boo I did not name that endermite before I put him in a minecart and I can't name him now, which means I have to get him out of the minecart, name him, and then somehow try and get him back into the minecart. So nothing to do except break this thing. And he's on the rails and he's chasing me. Lovely. Okay. Well, he was caught on the carpet for a second and then he fell down to the bottom. So I need to decide, do I kill that one and go for a new endermite? or try and make this work. And I've opted for option number B. I'm going to try and make this work. So I'm building a little leaf staircase up here. I'm going to lure the endermite up here and then trap him in the minecart as he comes falling down there. What can possibly go wrong? And here we go. We've named the endermite. He is on his way. And we've got our minecart ready. And ha ha, he is trapped. We now have one named endermite in a minecart so we can start getting rid of all this nonsense around here and then once we get the endermite in position we have a lot of cleanup to do because i want to keep it neat and tidy and i need to remove 
all the extra blocks both here and over at the ladder. And all we're doing now is finally nudging this guy into position. I don't know why he hurt so much. But we are almost there. One more little push and there we go. Our endermite is in position. That means we can clean everything up, remove the torches on the spawning platform. And with that done, we should have a fully functioning enderman farm. So let's get rid of these blocks and go try it out. And so far so good, it is functioning as intended and we've got a lot of endermen over here and they are very, very loud indeed. So let's see if this works. And we should, but what, what? Oh no, 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 get out of here, get, get out of here. That was way too close for comfort. It seems we have a bit of a problem as those guys can teleport onto the leaves behind me even though they can't spawn there. So I might need to find a solution. And as it turns out, the solution was very, very simple indeed. All we need to do is waterlog all of these leaves and they won't be able to teleport to them. So I'm just quickly creating an infinite water supply over here. Now I've got the water buckets in my shulker box, but first I think let's light up this place so we don't have any enderman spawning over here while we're busy working. And then let's get our buckets of water and let's waterlog this entire area. Unfortunately, I brought only the two buckets, so this might take a little while. Alrighty, let's grab some water over here. And now I was right, I can only grab the middle water. And we're going to start here and simply waterlog everything. Back in a bit. And there we go. We have waterlogged everything. And whew, look at that Enderman fly. Well, that should keep me safe while I'm at my Ender farm. And I think, oh, I missed these two. Fortunately, I've still got two buckets of water. Just pop that in there. And this, ladies and gentlemen, should be working perfectly now. We've got eight Ender pulls in there. And we've got some Enderman dying of entity cramming. Now, as long as I hit them, I should still get the experience from that. So let's get some experience going over here and I must admit when I started building this thing I was wondering if it is actually worthwhile I had all of the villages I could get plenty of experience but looking at this now looking at those levels go up this was definitely the right call I am very happy with this experience farm and I'm also very happy that I didn't die and this sound really is something to behold I've turned the volume way down on my game sounds and still it is deafening but our work here is done we've got 60 levels we've got tons of ender pulls and i think it's time that we get out of here and our next project is this abomination behind me we've got a ton of chickens they're laying a ton of eggs but we aren't exactly doing anything with those eggs so my next project is going to be a chicken cooker we can get the eggs, we can get some roast chicken from all of this, and I think it should not be too difficult. So first thing we need to do is mark out the area that we're going to dig out underneath this farm. We need to leave one block, so I need to go down two over here. All right, let's just get out of the hole, and then we'll go and do the same on the other end. And this will tell me exactly how far I need to dig underneath this chicken farm. So I think the other end is right over here. Let's get this corner marked out. And then let's go dig a big hole. And we've dug a hole and it is actually quite a bit bigger than I had anticipated. Now the problem is that I need to line this entire thing with rails and powered rails, but I have zero powered rails. I also have zero gold which means I need to go and find me some gold. I've used every last bit I had to make golden apples to cure the villagers. And I think the best course of action would be to go to the nether and mine me some nether gold. Now, all right, let's just fill up this hole quickly. Let's just grab our dirt and plug that up. And then I think we need to go back to that dreadful, dreadful place. Let's go back to the nether. Of course, we have one small problem, and that is that I hooked up my nether portal to the nether roof, which means I have no way of getting into the nether at the moment. However, that is easily rectified, and I think I'm going to make a new nether portal on Sheep Island. So let's just get in here. Let's place it right here, dig out these four blocks, 
and then let's make a new nether portal. Hopefully it's far enough away that it won't leak up to the one on the roof. I think it should be. It is quite a distance from the old one. But let's build it, let's light it, and let's go through and see. It's the only way we'll know for sure. So nether portal is done. Let's light the sucker up. And let's head back into the nether. And let's hope we don't spawn in a field of lava or something. So let's eat. And then let's see where this thing spits us out. And... Oh, okay, I recognize exactly where this is. It is literally behind where our old portal used to be. So I'm just going to go straight in here, dig out as much gold as I can. We've already got a few blocks here. And I'm not going to waste any time doing anything else over here. So let's get digging. Let's get some gold. And let's go home. And we managed to get quite a bit of gold from the nether. As you can see, we just finished fortuning it up. And let's grab all of our nuggets. None fell down here. That's good news. And we have quite a few nuggets. And that should give us more than enough bars to make our powered rails and complete our chicken farm. So here we go. And we are one stack short of making a stack of bars. However, I think we should pass a stack anyway. So let's just use all of these, make a few more bars at seven, and it leaves us with exactly nine. Beautiful. And we have over a stack. And we've made our powered rails. We've laid down most of the rails we need to lay down here. We've even made a little unloader here. So, last thing we need to do is just pop down all of these. Eh, not like that. Let's just remove these two. I think I'll put that one down first. One more block of dirt over there. And then we can get the last two rails in here. And that's it. Now, if we put down our minecart, it should go along its merry way, collecting all of the eggs, coming back and depositing them in the chicken cooker. So let's just see. Yeah, there it goes. It's picking up all of the eggs as it goes along. And that means we can get busy on the next part of this project. And the next part is the actual chicken cooker. We need something to fire the eggs. We need a place that will cook the chickens once they grow up. And I can always just go and look up how to do this. But I want to try and do this on my own. My redstone skills aren't the greatest. They sort of exist, but nothing fantastic. I've managed to make some beautiful machines before, and I'm quite confident that I can figure this out without getting any help from a tutorial. And so far, I think I have almost managed to make the chicken thing fire. Let's just get a little bit of space here. And I think I need to put down a repeater over there and then take some redstone out here. And we have an egg machine gun, but that's going to burn out. Yep, I need to set that tick one slower. And then let's remove the torch. Let's try this again. It should be working now. And look at it go. We have a chicken egg gun. And we've got an absolute ton of eggs over here in the chest. That's going to make plenty of chickens. But right now, we need to build the cooking part of this project. And the cooking chamber is done. All that's left for us to do is pop in some lava over here. And then let's replace the torch and watch it go to work. We already have one chicken and this is working beautifully. It is working quickly and I think this is going to do the job just fine. But as it turns out, it was doing the job too fine, which means the chickens were dying of entity cramming over here before they could grow up and get cooked. Now I have to figure out a way to slow down the rate of fire on this thing. Or I need to add a few more cooking chambers. And I think maybe the best would be a combination of both. And that means I need to go into my creative world and come up with a better system. I need to go build a better chicken farm. And we are back and say hello to the Chickenator 5000. Five times the lava, five times the cooking chambers five times hopefully the roasted chicken now i've tuned the timing to perfection in my creative world and this thing should be delivering a ton of roast chicken in no time at all and with our chicken farm completed it's time to move on to today's final build now i was debating over where i should actually build this thing and i've decided right here behind my first house 
is the perfect spot. As you can see, I flattened out the area already. I've gotten rid of all the trees and I've collected a ton of supplies. Just look at that many different supplies. And I think this is going to be brilliant. So let's take a quick look. Nice flat area over there. I will fix up the edges as soon as I've got a chance. But I've lit it up down here so we won't get any mobs spawning. And with that, it's time to start our special 50th YouTube video build. Let's get out there and let's start building. And it is looking beautiful. I have never built anything like this before. Most people build a big tree or something. I decided, as Fungosaurus Rex, to go for a giant mushroom. And I think it is looking absolutely glorious. We've got some lanterns and glowberries lighting the cap. And we've got some spores coming down from the top. And from this angle, it stands out quite dramatically. Now we've got a bit of a problem with a bamboo field in the way, but I was planning on taking that down and turning it into an automatic farm anyway. But before we go, let's take a quick look inside. As you'll notice, the entire thing is hollow. And that means we can build some water elevators on both sides to go up and down. And at the top, we actually have quite a bit of space. Look at that. We can build something absolutely beautiful in here. Perhaps a little jungle getaway or something of the like. I'm not entirely sure yet. We can also possibly put a farm or two up here, but we'll have to see in future episodes. For now, let's take a quick look on the outside. And I've deviated from my original design, which just had a little bit of a spruce fence going around it and decided a giant mushroom needs a fairy circle around it. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of smaller mushrooms. We've got some trees and then we've added just a bit of bamboo for effect and i'm very very happy with the way that this has turned out Now in the previous episode, we got a lot of work done. We built our gigantic, beautiful mushroom over there and it is looking fabulous. We also connected our nether portal to the nether roof and as a bonus, hooked that up with our end portal. So we've got a quick trip between the two and it's coming in very, very handy indeed because 
what we also did was build an Enderman farm. And it's a way to get some quick XP, fix up all of our gear, and of course, get a ton of Ender Pearls. And then lastly, we made some good use out of our chicken coop up there. We built an automatic chicken cooker, which is providing us with plenty of food. And I've been pondering what exactly it is that I wanted to do next. Because as you can see, I can keep building all sorts of random stuff, but not much of it is very useful. Like this mushroom, beautiful, but useless. I also wanted to set some long-term goals, and that has brought me back here back to the castle now when i originally built this castle i thought it was absolutely ginormous and as it turns out it was quite large but it's not the leviathan that i thought it would be and i have decided that it needs to be a lot bigger this is a good starting point and over time i'm going to be adding bits and pieces to it making it just grow and grow until it envelops all of the mountains around it and all of the land around it. I mean, if we take a look inside, yes, that is big, but it, 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 it's not exactly gigantic. Anyway, the plan is to flatten the mountains around it and then just keep adding to it until I can truly and honestly call it a mega base. And as I said, this is a long-term plan. It's not going to happen today. It's probably not going to happen over the next few weeks. This is going to take months and months of planning and just slow grinding to get it the way that I really want it to be. And in addition to making it a true mega base, building a bit more top here is going to allow me to hook up this bridge that at the moment goes absolutely nowhere up to the castle and make it a viable way of entry to the castle so that everything will knit together very nicely. Now the next thing I took a look at was the cathedral and at the moment it's not looking very cathedral like. I mean it's gorgeous, I love it, it's big, it's bold, but it doesn't very much look like a cathedral does it? So what I had in mind was to expand that a little bit as well, make it a bit more cathedral like at the moment. It's just a solitary tower sitting there and as it so happens we have a little bit of space here to the left of it. So I can build it out in that direction, add a few spires and the like. And then we can do a proper interior as well with some pews and perhaps a pulpit, stuff like that. And then finally, the last thing that I still have on my to-do list is, of course, the interior of this mushroom. And it's still in the design phase. I've got some of the redstone figured out, but I don't have a proper idea of the interior just yet. So we're also not going to be working on that today. So what are we going to be doing? Well, first things first, we are flying over to the chicken cooker because as effective as this is, it is looking rather sad. I mean, look at all this beautiful cooked chicken that it's providing us. I think this deserves a much nicer shell. And that is what I'm going to be doing first today. I'm going to be building a chicken hut, a nice little restaurant where the town folk can come and sit and enjoy some freshly cooked chicken. And I'm going to be doing this not in a time lapse, but rather walk you through the build. And I'm doing that for two very, very good reasons. Firstly, I didn't plan this at all. I'm going to be designing it as I'm busy building it. And secondly, in true Fungosaurus fashion, I have managed to delete my replay mod file instead of saving it, so I don't have any replay footage of me doing this build. And I'm not going to make the chicken hut a massive building. It's going to be, well, probably small by many standards. It's just going to be a simple little restaurant sitting here, a first step in a bigger plan. And there we go, we have dug out enough space, I've leveled it out at the front here, and I'm looking at the lake and I'm thinking I want to do a little bit of a deck over here where the people can sit, enjoy the chicken, and just have a peaceful time next to the lake. And I'm going to start by laying out a very, very rough outline for the build in dirt. First things, let's find the middle line that's over there. However, what I've got planned, I'm going to need a double block as a middle line. So let's put those two down there. That'll serve as my middle line. And then that will also serve as the doorway. So with that done, let's put down some more dirt and just get an idea of the size that we're going for here. And for the design itself, I want to make two little takeout windows on the front here. So people can come down, perhaps sit down at the window, or they can come and collect their orders. And if we take a look at what we've got so far, 
it looks to be a decent size. However, I think it is a little bit narrow. And I think the roof will also look a bit funny if I do build it this narrow. So I'm bringing it out just a few blocks to the front. This is going to be the new front of the shop. Let's get that in the right place. And then I think it's time to start building. So I've got a box of materials over here. I've got an idea of the color palette that I'm going for. And it's time to start placing some blocks. And with the framing done, I've got a good idea of the size. And of course, what I need to do around here. So I'm going to start filling in some walls. I think I'm going to go with some diorite now. I'm not quite sure whether I want to do just normal diorite or some polished diorite. And we filled in some more of the walls. And as you can see, it is looking pretty awesome so far. I'm putting in a little bit of purple glass on the sides here just to cover it up. And I think perhaps on the takeout window, I'll put a little bit along the top as well, just to get some color in there. There we go. And on this side, I need to fill it in as well. And I'm out of purple glass. Fantastic. I've ditched the purple glass at the front because I want to go for a bit more of an organic, natural look. So I'm using some bamboo trapdoors and these things really are amazing. They are versatile. They look awesome and fit the vibe perfectly. Next on the to-do list, I'm framing out the roof. And that is the basic idea of what I want here. I also want to add a special little feature to the front of the building. So this roof gives me the space I need to do that. And I think the next step is choose a block palette for the roof, get the materials I need and start laying it down. And I've gone for a birch border and then of course some deep slate tiles for the roof itself. So we're going to have a little bit of a gap between the two parts of the roof and I'm just going to cover this part with some polished diorite. Oh, that is, of course, if I don't place it in the wrong spot. And then once again, I'm using some bamboo trapdoors to cover up the hole in the middle, carrying on the organic look, giving it a little bit of air and ventilation up here. And that brings us to the final bit of the roof up here. Now I'm out of deep slate tile stairs, but I think it'll be nice to have the deep slate brick stairs up here. And I've capped the roof off with some birch. I'm just going to place a few stairs just to give it a little bit of shape on the corners. So one there, one there, and then just a slab on top. And that completes the roof mostly. Now I did mention a special feature that I want to put on here. And I think it's time to get started on that. I'm going to build a giant chicken head on the front of the chicken hut. Everybody knows a chicken restaurant needs some sort of chicken mascot beckoning you to come and eat him. And we are going to happily oblige with that. And a chicken head is four wide, which is why we needed a two center. So let's get a look at you guys. And then let's complete this chicken head. I've got most of the features in. I'm just adding a little bit of shading, a little bit of texture to it. And the next thing he needs is two beady black eyes. And of course, two nostrils up front. And let's take a look at our creation. It is magnificent. I love the chicken hut. And it's time to start working on the interior. And of course, the deck below where the customers can sit and eat. Now we've built the deck. It's time to add some furniture. And I'm going to carry on with the wicker look over here. I'm using some scaffolding. And then I'm going to place a few chairs down here. Maybe a little umbrella in the middle. Uh, let's put these closer together so they can have a nice little tight knit meal. And as I mentioned, they need an umbrella so that they don't burn in the harsh sun. And we're just going to... Oh, come on. There we go. We're going to use some black glass for the poles. And then at the top, we're going to use some birch trapdoors just to fill out the umbrella. And two more on this side. And there we go. First umbrella is done. And after some more thought, I've decided that I want to put a little table in the middle. And I've discovered that some scaffolding plus a bamboo trapdoor makes a beautiful wicker chair. Just look at that. I love it. And there we go. I started off with just three spruce trapdoors, but it looks a lot better if I add the bamboo trapdoors carrying on with that wicker look over here. And just look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So let's fast forward a little bit. 
And the chicken hut is complete. I've added some details, some flowers and an interior. And it is looking absolutely fantastic. I love the way this has turned out. And I've decided to name it after a very, very special lady. I have named it after my mother. So welcome to Ma Sophie's Chicken Hut. And if we take a look inside, you will notice that we have a wide selection of flavors to choose from. We have honey and mustard, sticky barbecue, flaming hot peri peri, lemon and herb, and of course the house specialty, Robert Spice. And that pretty much does it for the chicken hut, which means it is time to move on to our next project. And for that, we are busy brewing some potions of fire resistance because once again, we are heading back into the nether. I'm going to be building a gold farm and for that, I am going to need an absolute mass of magma blocks. It means I'm going to be dealing with some very hot stuff and I'm not taking any chances. So I'm brewing up a bunch of fire resistance potions. I'm making the good stuff, the eight minute ones. And then we're heading out to Sheep Island. And once again, into the bowels of hell itself. That dreaded place, the nether. Let me just get my fire resistance potion ready. And here we go. And I'm just gonna down this the instant I step through the portal. And the next quest is to find some magma blocks. Now I know there's a few down here. I don't know how many exactly, but it's a good start, so Pickaxe ready, let's grab these and we can actually walk on them because of the fire resistance potion and it'll also keep us safe from any rogue lava flows. And finally, we are done. We have collected almost 6,000 blocks of magma and it's only taken me two hours, which is quite surprising, but we have what we need. As you can hear, the natives are getting restless. So let's get out of here. And we're back home. With our magma blocks collected, we can just grab all of the rest of the stuff we need, a few hoppers, a few chests, perhaps a lot of glass, and then we can head back to the nether roof and we can start building our gold farm. And here we go. Now the first thing I need to do is check the biome because I need to build this thing entirely in the nether wastes. And it seems we are in luck. This entire area over here is actually a nether waste biome. Now the farm that I'm building is heavily inspired by Ilmango's design, but it is actually my own design. I've built one of these before and I sort of remember how it works. The thing is that my farm works on entity cramming. And once you've hit a zombie piglin and they aggroed on you, they will die and give you experience. So not only will we be getting a lot of gold, we'll be getting some experience as well without having to swing a single sword. And we're going to start by putting down a lot of scaffolding. We need this to go all the way up to build limit. And because we're on build limit, we will get maximum spawns. We won't have any interference from any of the mobs below because they'll be out of spawning distance. Now at this stage, I have to say, I have to build this thing absolutely perfect first time. If I make one single mistake, that could mean the end of me. And I'll tell you why. Because of the way the farm operates, I'm gonna have a ton of very, very angry zombie piglins out for my blood. And if they can reach me, I am going to die very quickly indeed. There's going to be possibly 70 angry zombie piglins at any given time. So this needs to go as smooth as humanly possible. But let's make our way up and let's start building.
and our gold farm is finally done and it is looking quite impressive it's not the prettiest thing i've ever seen but it'll do the job i've tested this extensively in my creative world and i'm quite confident that i'm not going to die instantly when i start this thing up so let's give it a try and i'm gonna freely admit that right now i am super nervous about starting this thing up as you can see we've got a ton of piglins that have already spawned i'm encased in my glass box here none of them should be able to get to me they've got the one wide hole right behind me which they'll fall into and then die of entity cramming so let's get this thing going and it seems they don't get angry if you kill them with your bow with one shot my bow is a little bit too powerful it seems i'm gonna have to give this a bit of a weaker shot so let's pick another target one of those guys will do uh, let's grab our bow and oh way too weak there we go they are angry they are coming and just look at them oh that's a bit of a design oversight i haven't quite figured out but here they come look at that any second now they should be dying of entity cramming and there they go and here comes the experience just look at that and we've been afk for a few minutes now just to see if everything is working properly and oh oh no okay i have royally messed up my item sorter and as it turns out i have made a completely bonehead mistake over here i have put my item filters in the wrong hoppers now fortunately that's a mistake that's very easy to rectify it's just gonna take a little bit of time and uh, first i need to clean out the mess that i've made here and now we should have a working item sorter so let's head up get the piglings angry once more and here they come once again and you'll see i've added in some walkways for the guys from that end so they can come and join the party as well and it seems to be working a treat and it's been 30 minutes already and they are still coming i am up to level 81 which is absolutely brilliant but before I label this a resounding success, I need to go check on my item sorter. And we're back and we can witness the fruits of our labor. And yes, the item sorter is working. And just look at all of those nuggets we have already. Look at all of the rotten flesh. And then the swords go in here and get smelted into nuggets. And the results are in. We have in 30 minutes got 20 blocks of gold now it's probably not the most efficient farm ever built but if i count the gold bars still in the item filter it gives me roughly 400 bars of gold per hour which i think is not bad It is 2024, a brand new year, and I have a feeling that this is going to be a good one. Now, yes, I might have accidentally already almost set fire to the entire village, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Right now, it's time to get back to work and continue expanding our beautiful village. I've got quite a few ideas for the episodes to come, so let's get right into it and start today's action and we're starting right over here in the warehouse well if you can call it a warehouse it's more like a ramshackle collection of chests that i've just plonked down as i needed them and i think it's high time that we start organizing this mess so today we're going to be designing and building a storage system and warehouse where we can put all of this nonsense now, if you're wondering why I'm checking my semi-super smelter, I've had a few issues with it, so I'm just checking if everything is still going all right, and it seems to be just fine. So with that out of the way, let's get out there and let's get planning our warehouse. So the first thing I need to decide is where exactly I want to put this. Now, I have been looking around and I think that this spot over here, right over there next to the chicken hut, might be the perfect place to put it it's got access to the farmlands over there it's got access to the village and of course it's got access most importantly to the chicken hut where all the hungry warehouse workers can go sit down and have some of Mar Sophie's delicious chicken 
Additionally, it is right out here on the lake and I also want to build a dock where the ships can come into port and get some goods and trade at the warehouse. And welcome to the back rooms. This is my creative design world where I prototype and design all of the things that eventually go into my hardcore survival world. Now, as you can see, here is the chicken head that proudly sits on top of the chicken hut. Over here, we've got the prototype that I designed for the chicken cooker itself. And then I've got a few bits and bobs that I'm working on over here. This is a timing system for a water elevator that I'm hoping to install into the mushroom. And here you can see a very early perimeter version of it. And I'll quickly show you how that works. So we've got our button over here. And if we press that, it swaps out the magma block for some soul sand, which allows you to go up. And after appropriate time, it switches back to magma, which will allow us to come back down. Now, this, of course, is going to go inside the mushroom. And I've already started designing an interior around it. So a little sneak preview. Let's just take a quick look in here. And that's all you get. If you want to see more, you will have to wait for the episode on that to come out. But enough fooling about. Let's get to our sorting system. And as I mentioned before, I want to design this thing as well because it's easy to go and look for a tutorial online and build it just like somebody else says. But I want to do this by myself. And I also want to include a shulker unloader, which I have designed myself as well. As you can see, here are some early prototype bits and pieces of it. I don't think this was particularly successful. But if we move over here, we can see what I call Mark 1. And this one was fully functional, except it was missing a few refinements and just a little bit of polish. So we moved on to Mark II, which you can see right over here. And we've added a little bit of refinements, just a few extra things. But even Mark II was not quite finished just yet. As I started testing it with the rest of the sorting system, I picked up a few bugs along the way and I had to come up with solutions for those. Now, this might not be the most compact redstone I've ever seen, but it's mine and it works. And here you can see this funny little gadget, which is one of the refinements that I added to solve one of the problems. And you can see it down there in action. And that brings us to Mark III, the shulker box unloader that actually works. And there we have it hooked up to the rest of the sorting system and everything is going just fine. So with this entire system planned out, designed by myself, which I'm very proud of, it's time to move all of this into our actual survival world. So let's go. And the first thing we need to do over here is mark out exactly the area that we're going to need to build this entire system. It's going to be quite huge. As I said, my redstone isn't the most refined or the tiniest, but it works and I'm very happy with it. So it's time to get digging. We've got quite a bit of dirt and stone and stuff to remove over here. So let's get started on that. And taking a look at just how much material I need to remove here, I think this is going to take quite a while. So I'm going to need a beacon and I'm going to need a time lapse. And there we go, the entire area has been dug out. I've dug the hole here, which is going to house my shulker box unloader. And yeah, standing here, it looks quite massive. However, we have the space, so there's no need to panic. And we've got the entire area flattened out. And I think it's time to go find some materials and get building. Now, there are two things that I know I need. I need some slime. I'm hoping that I have some slime around here somewhere because I need one sticky piston. Then I also need some blue ice to make my water streams work. And I am very, very confident that I have absolutely no ice whatsoever. So I think I'm just going to empty out a few of these shulker boxes and then I'll set out in search of a snowy icy biome and go get myself some ice. So let's get these empty and then we'll go on a winter wonderland adventure. And yes, it's a little late for the Christmas music, but 
I am in an icy wonderland and I am going to enjoy this as much as possible. Now the first thing I want to do is get myself some of this packed ice over here and see if I can actually turn that into blue ice. I haven't worked with ice much before, so I need to make sure that what I think I can do, I can actually do before I go flattening all of these mountains and end up with a bunch of ice that I can't really use. So I've got a few pieces of ice. Let's just land here, quickly make ourselves a crafting bench, and then we'll see if we can actually turn this packed ice into blue ice. As I said, I'm 99% confident that I can, but I just want to make 100% certain. And yes, there we go. We have some blue ice. So let's go take down a bunch of icebergs. And I have absolutely decimated this poor, poor landscape. The polar bears have run away. They are panicking because they have no more home. And I am feeling bad. But that's all right. Let's grab our bed. Let's grab our shulker box. Our pickaxe is also almost finished. So I'll need to make a quick trip to the gold farm and get that fixed up as well. But we have plenty and plenty of packed ice, which we can turn into blue ice. And then we can get busy building our sorting system and our warehouse. I'm just taking down this few final pieces over here just to make sure that I've destroyed everything thoroughly. And then we can make our way back home. And here we are, we've collected all of... Okay, that was slightly embarrassing. I tried to do something cool and I didn't have a rocket in my hand. Let's take to the skies and then let's make our way to the building site. I have collected most of what I need. However, I am still missing a sticky piston. So I'm heading over to the old home to see if I've got any slime lying about. I've got nothing in my monster box. I've got nothing in my ender chest. And this is looking like a rather sad situation. Oh, three sticky pistons. Awesome. Okay, that is what I need. So I pretty much have everything to start building. I've assembled a bunch of more stuff over here in a shulker box. All my redstone goodies that I'm going to be needing to build this thing. So let's just grab that quickly. As you can see, we've got all of our redstone goodies waiting for us. And with that, we can make our way over to the building site and start building. And our shulker box unloader is complete. Let's turn it on. Let's pop a shulker box in there. Hit the button and watch it in action. So it's unloading. It's done unloading. It breaks the shulker box, returns it to me in this chest. Is that not fantastic? And then down here, we have the goodies. I don't have the water column in there yet. So I think I'm going to add that and then give it another test. All right, we have the water column pretty much done. Let's get that sign in there. One more piece of glass over here. And I've made a mess down there. I've completely messed up my redstone. Fortunately, it's an easy fix. We just put the torch down there. And then I just need to get this minecart rolling again. So let's just pop up here. Calm down, piston. There we go. It's working. It is fixed. And we have our water column up. So once again, it's time for a little test. I've got a shulker box with eight iron over here. We're going to put that into the system. And then let's just throw this iron. We hit the button and we will see if it works. There it goes. Unloading. Done unloading. And there go the items. Fantastic. We've got our iron that we've put in and whoop, some more iron right over there. And this is working beautifully our shulker box has returned to us so let's shut that off just to save on the noise and then let's get busy with the rest of it now i've been noticing the population dwindling over here in the village but this is the saddest sight of it all you'll notice that we do not have a single solitary mason remaining and they're not up in the rooms I don't think they're anywhere to be found over here. Nope, not in here either. And I don't think it's possible that they could have got out either because I've blocked off all the doors to make sure that they cannot get out, which means that they are most probably 
no longer with us. And that's very, very sad. And I mainly blame this big guy over here in the middle. Now my working theory is that a zombie spawned around here somewhere, probably in the closet because it's nice and dark and big enough for them to spawn in there. And then he must have turned all of my masons into zombies themselves. And in turn, they were promptly taken out by big guy. So the first thing I'm going to do is light it up in here. And I've been thinking about what I'm going to do next. Now, I obviously have to replace my masons at some stage. But first thing I need to do is take care of big guy. And I'm going to do that by setting him on fire because I don't want to go in here. Swords are swinging and run the risk of him ending my series right here. So I'm just going to light him on fire here. Keep putting out this fire in order not to set the whole place alight because there's a lot of wood over here. And this might take a little bit longer than I would like. So let's just carry on lighting the fire and hope it's over soon. Oh, no, 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 no. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, goodness. Okay, this. I did not expect this to happen. Oh, oh, no, this is not good. Not good at all. Let's put this out. It has spread to the top floor. It has spread to the roof. This has not gone well at all. Oh, okay. I need to get outside. I need to get onto the roof and I need to get that fire out as soon as possible because I don't want this entire building to go up. And I'm on fire myself. This is really going very well indeed. But we're making some headway. We're making some headway. We're getting in the fire. Oh, goodness. There's a lot of fire over here. Okay, that uh, let's get on top. Let's get this out. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. And I do not have a single bucket of water on me either, which is just making this absolutely ridiculous. Stop spreading. No. Okay. 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 We're almost there. We're almost there. Just a little bit more here and uh, one more around the corner. And, and that's it. The fire is out, but the damage is done. Just look at this mess. And yeah, uh, I don't even have the heart to rebuild this right now. I'm just going to, I actually don't know what I'm going to do here. Um, but I can tell you one thing. I'm not going to take care of this right now. Let's just get the stair up there. And then, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore what happened here completely for the moment and I'm going to throw myself into building my warehouse. Now, I'll take care of this eventually, but right now I'm just going to leave this be and I've been thinking I might even turn it into a feature. We'll see, but right now, let's build. And we're going to be starting off with the first sorting module. So the first thing I need to do is measure it out. I'm going to have eight chests on each because that's how far the water can flow. So let's just measure it out with some dirt over here and just a few more blocks to go. That's all still working perfectly. Next, we're going to put down the chests and I'm making it five high. That's a lot of chests indeed, but we need a lot of storage. Next up, we're adding some hoppers, a little bit of glass and redstone and some signs. And the first module is pretty much complete. Now all we need to do is replicate this seven more times and then build a warehouse building around it. So here we go.
Finally, the entire sorting system is completed and the main structure around it has been built. It took a lot of time, it took a lot of building materials and I didn't plan any of this out ahead so it was all done on the fly. Now there's obviously a lot more left to do here. We need to add a bunch of details and of course we will need to add a dock around it. However, what we've done so far is looking really amazing and I think this is going to be fantastic once it's done. Now in the last episode, we started building our automated sorting system and we then built a warehouse to cover it all up and everything is looking pretty good already. However, there's still a lot of work to do here. We still need to do the entire interior and we haven't really set up any of the filters either. So we don't actually know if it's working yet or not. Additionally, I still want to build a dock to go around the outside and then underneath the chicken hut, we need to put in some stairs which will allow access from the village as well as the farming area. So there's a lot of building left to do, there's a lot of decorating left to do, and I think once this is done, it will look amazing. So let's get started. Now the first thing I want to do is see if I can make this warehouse look a little bit more warehousey. At the moment it's looking pretty good, but if you just look at it, you wouldn't know what it really is. It could be a giant barn or something like that, and I want to make it an unmistakable warehouse. So in addition to a few more details, I'm going to add something that all warehouses have and desperately need. I'm going to be adding a few cranes. Now I don't have much experience with cranes. I think I've built a grand total of one a long, long time ago in a far, far away world. So I'm going to have to design this from scratch. However, I don't want to go to a creative world and design one there. I want to see if I can build one right here in the real world. So let's grab some blocks and get started. Now the reason I've decided not to do this in a design world is because I've become very reliant on my design world. Everything I do is meticulously planned out and then recreated in my survival world. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm probably going to be doing a lot more of that. But I just want to see if I can actually build things on the fly. Like this entire warehouse has been built on the fly and I think it came out really well. So. For this build in particular, I'm going to carry on with that trend. I'm not going to design anything in the design world. I'm going to be doing it all right here. Now I'm going to start off by marking out exactly where I want this crane to go. And this platform is the perfect size. If you look at it, we've got three surrounding the edges. We've got three in the middle and it's all very nice and symmetrical. Next, I'm going to be taking this up by a few blocks. I think three high and then I'm going to build a little bit of a platform, take it up some more before finally getting to the main centerpiece, which will go all the way up. So let's get a few more blocks in here. And then once this is done, I'll use some stairs to just build a little bit of a lip over here. And then inside of that, I'll take it up a few more blocks. So let's get the stairs. And this is looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with what we have so far. We've got the base support structure of the crane in place. And yeah, then that's not looking half bad at all. So let's get the center pole going all the way up and then we'll start working on the boom. Uh, I 
think that's high enough. Let's get some spruce planks. And then I'm going to take this one up and let's go to the front. It needs to clear the front of the building. And then I think we need to add one or two to the back where we can attach the counterweight. So let's just add two here and then let's take a look at what this looked like so far. And yeah, there, that's looking pretty good. Now I've been adding some details to the crane because I think the details are going to be what makes or breaks this. I'm going to put a grindstone right here and then I'm going to use some chains just to make it look like it's actually an operational crane. I wish we had some ropes in Minecraft. Devs, please consider that. But chains will do just fine for now. And there we go. Let's get rid of our scaffolding. And then we need to take some more chains down from the grindstone into a little basket that we can put goods in. So let's clean this up and then we'll take a look at what we've made so far. So let's fly out and I really like where this is going. I think once we're done with the basket, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. So I've added a few more details. I've made a few design changes and I've made a basket and we're filling it up with some dark oak logs. This is going to be one of our exports, obviously, seeing as we've got a nice little dark wood grove growing just over the hill. And we're going to be exporting all sorts of other goods as well. But I think this crane is pretty much done. So let's clean it up. Let's get a good look at what we've created. And then if we like what we see, we're going to add a few more of them all over the place. So here we go. It's the moment of truth. And yes, that certainly does look like a crane. I think that is looking really good. So we'll be using that design to build a few more in due time. However, right now, I think it's time to start looking at other areas of interest. And the one in particular I'm going to look at now is this area over here under the chicken hut. And well, I, I've built something. I can't say that I really like it. Yeah, this design just doesn't speak to me at all. It's... I suppose I could try and dress it up with some texturing and some details, but I really think at this stage that would just be putting lipstick on a pig. And the more I look at it, the more I dislike it. I need to rip this out and replace it completely. Now, fortunately, I have designed something that was intended to go there a while ago, then shelved it and forgot about it. But I did a test fit and with a little bit of alteration, it'll fit absolutely perfectly. So let's get busy. Let's take apart this horrible, horrible wall and let's build something much better. And we're done and I must say I'm very happy that I've decided to rip out the old wall and replace it with this one because it certainly is looking a lot better. Now there's still a little bit of detailing, a little bit of texturing left to do over here, but already this is a massive improvement. And I've also added this little part over here which connects this staircase up nicely with the farming area. And as you can see, this is all looking very neat and tidy, perhaps a little too neat and tidy. So I think we need to do just a little bit of texturing. I've already started on this side over here, but we need to do a little bit of texturing maybe on the stairwell and on this wall at the front here. So let's get that done. And there we go. The staircase is completed. Everything is nice and connected now. And I think it's time that we start looking at the docks. Now, as you can see, I've marked out where I want the docks to start over there. I'm not sure if that's going to be the final size, but that's why I'm going to lay out the entire thing with dirt first. And once I'm happy with the layout, then I will commit to doing it in stone. Now, this might take a while. This is going to be a massive area to cover. So I think it's best if we jump straight into a time lapse.
And there we go. The dock is finally completed. As you can see, I've put barrels, chests all over the place. I've lit it up quite nicely and I've built a few more cranes. And this really now does look like a warehouse. I am extremely happy with the way this has turned out. And I'm also very happy with the way that it connects with the rest of the village and the farming area as well. I think for an unplanned build, this could not have gone better. It is looking absolutely fantastic. But wait, that's not all. We have an interior as well. Just look at that. Absolutely spectacular. And I've set up some of the filters, which means we can start sorting our items. Now, if we move upstairs, you will notice that I've added a network of catwalks for the dock workers so they can go about their jobs and move about from one part of the warehouse to the other. And everything I think is now completed inside and out. And it's looking awesome. So the only thing left to do is actually test out the system and see if it works. So let's get the power on. Uh, just flick this lever and there we go. The noise tells you that it is indeed working. Next, we'll add a few shulker boxes in the chest up here. I've added a random bunch of objects to the shulker boxes just to make sure that all the filters are working. And then the next step is to hit the start processing button and then we'll see all the stuff coming up the water stream. So let's boop it. And there we go. First shulker box is in there. It is unloading and we should see the items coming up here any second now. And yes, there it goes. And it seems it has picked the ice chest first. So the unloading part is working absolutely perfectly. Let's head upstairs and see if the sorting part is working as well. And already we're running into some problems. As you can see, for some odd reason, all of the stuff is collecting in this hopper over here instead of going over the ice and into the next water stream. Now, I'm not sure why that is happening. I'll need to do a little bit of research and see why exactly it's doing that and how I can fix it. I hope it's not a critical issue with my sorting system because I do not want to tear this entire thing down. But I'm sure I can find a solution and in no time at all, we'll have a perfectly working sorting system. So I'll be back with you guys in just a second. Now, apparently what it looks like was the items aren't lining up properly before going into the water stream. So they're crossing over the middle of the hopper where they tend to get stuck. And it's an easy fix. So I just need to make a little bit of a detour over here once they come up from the bubble column and then make sure that they get lined up properly. And yes, it's not the prettiest of solutions, but you know what? If it works, I am not too bothered about it. I've got my chest in there. That'll ensure that they line up properly due to its smaller hitbox. And I think it's time to start up the machine and see if we fix the issue. And the results are in and it's working absolutely perfectly. Just look at the items go, skipping over that hopper onto the ice and into the rest of the water stream. So I'm really glad that that wasn't a big issue. It was an easy fix. And now we have a perfectly working sorting system. So the next thing I'm going to need is tons and tons of leather because I need to put some item frames on there, mark every one of the chests so I know exactly what's in them. So here I am at the cow farm making many, many more baby cows. Come and get it, you greedy sods. Alrighty, I think that is just about all of them. What the heck? has happened here. Ah, uh, my sniffers are gone. Half the pen is missing. The tree is gone. I have absolutely no clue as to what has happened here. It, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is fire, but really, I have no idea how it could have caught fire, how it could have spread. I haven't been near this place in quite a while, so this is absolutely baffling. I have no clue as to what has transpired. I think perhaps what I need to do is go look at some of the replay footage and see if I can figure out what on earth has happened to my sniffers. So let's queue up the CCTV footage. And this tells the sad tale. The pen gets struck by lightning immediately after which it stops raining so the rain doesn't put out the fire as it normally would. This then spreads to the tree, it demolishes the pen itself, and finally, it also sets poor, poor snort on fire. 
As you can see, she is a resilient girl and she quickly manages to shake it off. However, she has sustained some serious damage. At this point though, the pen has been compromised, which allows these two curious creatures to escape their pen and go exploring. Now this is also tragic because as you can see, Snort hops the fence and having been fire damaged, she makes contact with the cactus and unfortunately is no more. Snoof on the other hand has survived the ordeal, he survived the fire and he is now free to go on a grand adventure and explore the world around him. Now, if Snoof is still alive, and I really do believe that he is, I need to find him. He has to be around here somewhere, and I'm sure he is alone and absolutely terrified. Now, before you say, oh, but you used to have three sniffers, yes, Snoot has escaped the pen long, long ago. He's off on an adventure and having the time of his life. That is what I truly believe, and that's the way the record books will reflect it. And finding this sniffer is almost impossible. It doesn't help that they are the color of grass and leaves because everywhere I look, there are grass and leaves. And it looks like I might need to turn back to the replay mod to see if I can find him. And unfortunately, this is where I lost track of him. I have followed his steps and this is his last known location. So I am very, very certain that he has to be around here somewhere. I'm going to comb the area and I am going to find my last surviving sniffer. Now I did stock up on a few sniffer eggs, so at least when we do find Snoof, he won't be alone. Snoof! Ooh! I swear I saw a hint of green moving down in that hole. Is it Snoof? Let's go check, let's go check. Are you here, my... Oh, no, 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 no. You are not Snoof. You are not Snoof indeed. Go away, go away. Um... Okay, let's just get a little bit of distance between me and Mr. Splody here. Get my bow and then let's get rid of this nasty vile creature. Take that. That's what you get for impersonating Snoof. All right. I still haven't found him though, so I need to keep looking. And I am sure he has to be a... Sniffer Saints, Sniffer Saints. Oh, 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 where are you? Where... Snoof! Snoof, my boy! There you are, you big lunk. All right, I've got some leads and I'm going to take Snoof home. So let's just dig out some of this area over here. He's stuck down there, so I need to get him out first. And I need to be careful with the shovel because I really don't want to hit him. I don't know if he sustained any damage. I don't know how hurt he is or how healthy he is, but he is alive and we are taking him home. Oh, he just pops up right like that. Okay, let's get a lead on you and let's go home, my boy. So I haven't rebuilt his pen just yet. I'm going to tie him up over here by the mushroom. He can eat some flowers. He can sniff around in the dirt. And I'm sure there are plenty of interesting scents to keep him happy. But right now, there's something I need to go take care of. And that is to say goodbye properly to Snort. She was a lovely girl. And I'm sure she'll be very happy right here next to Snuff. So let's build her a little memorial as we say goodbye to another member of our little family. Goodbye, Snort. You will be sorely missed, but your memory will live on. Our town has suffered quite a few setbacks over the last few episodes. It all started with a fire at the Mason's Guild, which nobody really knows how it started, but it certainly gutted the entire building. The tragedy was then compounded by a lightning strike to the sniffer pen, setting it on fire and claiming our poor sweet snort. It also allowed Snoof to hop over the fence and wander off into the wilderness. But it wasn't all sad news as we managed to find the big lunk and ultimately we brought Snoof home safely. And then we said goodbye to Snort. But it is time to heal, it is time to rebuild. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Minecraft Hardcore. And we're going to start off today by fixing the fire damage at the Mason's Guild. As you can see there's a lot of blocks missing here. So let's hop over to our storage and let's grab some blocks, get it fixed up and looking brand spanking new. 
Aha, bamboozled! I did not fix it up looking brand spanking new. Instead, I have decided to keep the fire as a monument. As you can see, the charred remains and smoldering embers behind me still remain. And I think this is a great way to keep track of the history of the village, of everything that has happened, of every tragedy. And I really do think this looks amazing. Next on our list, we need to get Snoof back home. And that means we need to fix up his pen. Because the big guy's been having a great time over here under the mushroom. He's been sniffing, he's been digging and having a blast in general. But unfortunately, it's time for him to go home. Now I've done a quick survey of the damage and it's actually not all that bad. Snort's old pen is still perfectly intact, so is Snoot's old pen. And the only thing that really got damaged was Snoof's pen, along of course with the cherry tree. So this is where the fire started, this is what took the brunt of it. And because there was no roof keeping them in anymore, this is where they got out. So let's fix it up. And I'm going to be using some jungle slabs instead of the original oak. Just because of the color difference between the two, the oak slabs looks a little bit older and more faded, while the jungle slabs looks fresher and you can really see that something has been rebuilt here. Just another example of how I'm going to keep the heritage and the history of this village alive. And this should be a fairly quick job. And we are almost done. I like the roof. I like the difference between the jungle and the oak slabs. And I really do think that it just adds a little bit of something extra to the entire build. Now let's just get that one in there. And I think there we go. The pen is just about finished. Plenty of space for Snoof to come and do his sniffer things. Just one or two more blocks. And it's looking pretty good. Just one more finishing touch. And that is of course to add back Snoof's name tag. I mean, how else is he going to know which pen is his? And with that done, it's almost time to bring the big boy home. Last thing that we need to do is, of course, replant the cherry tree. And I'm going to make quick work of this with some bone meal. And there we go. We have a cherry tree. The sniffer pen is once again ready for the big guys. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Otherwise, Snoof won't be able to get into his pen. One more there, perhaps. And now all we need to do is add some sniffers. And I really don't want Snoof to be alone, so I'm going to hatch the two sniffer eggs that I had, and we're going to have three sniffers once again. Over there, we're going to have Stinky, and over here, we have Sniffy. And with that done, let's go fetch the big guy. Now, I'm not sure what's going to be best, bringing him over on a leash or luring him with some torch flower seeds. I've got both, but getting him here from the river on a leash was quite a mission. Now, it might have just been due to the terrain, so let's give it a try and see how it goes. And getting him back here was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I made him a little staircase so he can climb down safely. I don't know how hurt he is. I don't know how you heal a sniffer. Do you feed him torch flower seeds or I don't know. Anyway, let's remove the stairs so he can't get back out. And then the big boy is once again back in his home. And he certainly does look happy to be here. He's surrounded by all of the familiar sights and scents he's known since he hatched. And once Stinky and Sniffy hatch, he'll have the pitter-patter of giant thumping feet to keep him company. And with this taken care of, it's time to move on to the next problem. And that problem lies right here at the docks and the warehouse. Even though everything is looking amazing, interior is looking amazing as well, there is a giant problem here. And it's not a problem with the sorting system itself. That is all working absolutely brilliantly. As you can see, our shulker box was returned to us and we've got all of these things being sorted perfectly. The problem we have lies outside. So let's head out and take a look. And as we fly over here, it should become apparent immediately what the problem is. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this lake has no connection to the sea. That means the trader ships have no way of getting in here to come and do business. That's right, I built a dock and warehouse in a landlocked lake. Now I've been flying around and I have identified two potential solutions to this problem. The first is of course going through right here into this river right behind us which leads into the ocean. It's a nice wide river and the ship shouldn't have a problem passing through it. However, there is a problem with that solution, which I'll get to in a little bit. 
The second solution that I've come up with is to go through here. Now, the drawback on this is that this is a massive piece of land that will need to be excavated to build a canal coming into this river. Also, the rivers here aren't very wide, which means, if you think about it really, the ships won't be able to come inland. And that is the dilemma we're facing. We've got two potential solutions, both of which have a massive problem. But looking at it from the sky, the long road has about four times the digging that we'll need to do. It's going to take absolutely forever. So I think that has made up my mind. I am going to go with a short route, but that means we have a completely different problem to solve. So let's fly back over there and let me show you what I mean. Now looking from above, you will notice there's a massive crevice over here. It goes down deep, it is very dark in there, and it is absolutely crawling with nasty mobs. And that multiplies our problem twofold. Not only do we have creepers crawling from the sky, as that one just illustrated to us. Let's take him out, there comes another one. There's a zombie coming to join the party. And you can see exactly how many of these foul things there are around here. But the mobs is not the biggest potential problem. If we go and dig the canal, there is of course the pos- Ah, jeez, another one. Okay, there's a creeper, there's a skeleton down there somewhere. Let's take care of the creeper and then we'll go find the skeleton. But as I was saying, there's the potential of breaking through the roof of this massive cavern over here and falling down and breaking all of our bones. As you can see, it's extremely dark. It is crawling with skeletons. Let's see how many we can take out. And then once we've got these guys taken care of, I think I'm just going to go down there and light it up. And already it is much, much better. Here we go. Just a little bit more to go here. And oh, here is a lush cave as well. I'm not going to be exploring it, but it's good to know we have a source of clay over here. And even though I've lit up most of this cavern, as you can see down in that direction, it is still extremely deep, extremely dark. There's some endermen. There are still a lot of mobs around, but I'm not going to be too bothered with them right now. I need to get out of here and I need to start planning a canal. And this is going to be the lakeside inlet of the canal. We're going to have a lakeside and a riverside inlet. I think those are quite cute names. But the first thing we're going to do is dig a tunnel straight through here and see if we actually do break through into that massive cavern. Now, of course, I'm hoping we don't. It'll make life a lot easier, but I suspect it's going to be a close call. And here we go. OK, that could have gone a lot worse. This is actually not too bad. We are not through into the cavern below. However, there is a little bit of a cavern over here. So. All things considered, it has actually gone really well. You can see there how little tolerance we have to work with, and we have just barely managed to miss it. But it's time to dig all the way through to the other side and see what's happening. And I think we are getting very close to the other side. We've run into some dirt. There's some rooted dirt as well, which means we are through. And no other problems, but this is a massively long tunnel. Digging this has made me realize just how much work I've got to do here. Another thing is that this is at water level, which means we have to dig it down a few blocks. And I have a suspicion that if we dig down here, we're going to break through to the roof. So let's get in here. Let's dig through and let's see exactly how much we have to play with. And that's a hole. So we don't have very much space to play with, which means I will have to rethink exactly what I'm going to do with this canal. Now I have an idea to install a bunch of locks which will actually raise the water level above this area and I think it'll look pretty cool too. And with that done I'm just digging two trenches on either side of where I want to make the canal just to mark it out and to give me an idea of the area I need to work in. So this trench is done, I've already dug the one on the other side and now we can get a good look of the area we need to dig out. Everything between those two lines has got to go and just looking at the amount of digging we're going to need to do here it makes me very glad that we didn't go for the other option because this is just a fraction of what we would have had to do on the other side now looking at this i'm going to need some serious tools to get it done in any sensible time frame so let's go fetch our beacon and then once it's set up we'll start digging
And with that, ladies and gents, our canal has been dug. However, there is still a ton of work to do. I have no intention of just leaving it a bare strip of rock down there. I've got big plans for it and I want to make it look absolutely amazing. Now, the first thing I need to do is dig an inlet at both sides, which the ships can come into. The water level will rise and then they can move into the middle part. So I'm going to start off by digging out this part here. And then I'm going to set up a few pillars just to mark off where the start of this inlet is going to be. So let's dig this out. And there we go. The pillars have been set up. That's going to be the start of this inlet. So with that in mind, let's just count out all of the blocks here. And I'm going to take this to where I want the actual inlet to end. And the second set of locks is going to start. So I've already counted this out. I'm just doing this twice to make sure. And yes, my first count was correct. So the first set of locks is going to be by the pillars in the river. The second set is going to be right here. So now let's just mark this off on the other side as well. And uh, I absolutely hate these vines. And even if I go up there and break down the tree, the vines will still persist. They are an absolute pain. But we've got this side marked off, which means I need to dig out this entire area over here. Now I'm going to make it too deep, taking us below the waterline of the river. And then we'll do the same on the other side. And the first inlet has been dug. I'm just making it a little bit neater over here. I've left the wall up there to keep the water at bay while I'm working. But once we've got all of this in, we can break that down and fill up this area with water, making it essentially an extension of the river. And with this side done, let's do it on the other side. And there we go. I have dug out the inlet. I have made it all pretty at the bottom and I filled it with water. So the only thing standing between the lake and the inlet is this little dirt bridge. So let's get rid of that. And then we'll have a connection from the lake to the inlet. And both sides have now been done, so let's take a look at our work. The ships will enter the first lock here, where there will be water pumped in, taking them up to the level that's going to be in the middle. And then, of course, when they reach the other side, they will be lowered again, and then they can enter into the river and to the ocean. And with the entire canal dug out, the two inlets completed, we have made a lot of progress. As you can see from the sides, the ships will enter into the inlet from the river. Then they will pass through a series of locks and make their way through the canal to the other side where they will be lowered into the lake. In this episode of Minecraft Hardcore, I build a canal. I build a boat and I build a sheep. Yes, it's going to be a build packed episode. So if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and let's jump straight in. Now we haven't even gotten started properly yet and already I have had some technical difficulties. I have recorded two hours of this screen. I don't know how it happened. Four separate recordings totaling two hours and this is all I have to show for it. So let's jump ahead a little bit and get back to where the action is. And first things first, I have some animal news. I have decided to tame Chicken Horse over here. I've got him a nice little saddle and Chicken Horse is now the newest member of our little family. And well, well, he can jump and he can run. How well he can do either of those things, I don't really know because I've got nothing to compare it to. But it really doesn't matter because he is mine and I love him. So let's just park him here for now. And although I don't really have a use for chicken horse since I've got the elytra, I have thought that perhaps what I can do is at some stage take him for a ride around the town, a ride around the lands and just have a look at all of the things we've built so far in this season in detail. If that's something you would like to see, let me know in the comments below and perhaps we can organize something. But now it's back to building and we're going to start off with the canal. Now, as you can see in the time that my recording got messed up, 
I have made a little bit of progress. I've got a basic idea of what I want to do with the walls. However, this is a lot of grey. So I'm probably going to be using another block for these areas over here. And I also had an idea to use dispensers that can fill and drain these locks. Although I didn't manage to get that working. As soon as you turn on two dispensers one block apart, it creates a source block in the middle. And I just don't know how to get around that. The other problem, of course, is that I would have needed hundreds of dispensers and that meant crafting hundreds of bows. I also don't have the stomach for that, so I'm filling all of these holes back up. And then I've got another idea which I'm going to do just to add a little bit of style to the canal. And there we go. This is the idea of the walls. I have gone with some terracotta and it just breaks up all of that grey. Now, as you can see, I still haven't completely figured out the walkway above it. But we're getting there. So next thing I need to do is build some lock gates. And for that, I'm going to use some thick, sturdy spruce. So we're just going to start on these sides and work our way towards the middle. And this should be the last line. And then we have this block over here, which is going to be the middle of the lock gate. Next, I'm going to use some spruce planks to build the rest of the lock gate, but I think I might be building this one block too high. And indeed, it was one block too high, but we've removed the top layer and we're replacing it with some more thick, sturdy spruce. And finally, we're capping it off with some cut copper slabs. Now, I'm not yet 100% sure whether I'm going to wax this so that it stays nice and pristine, or whether I'm going to let it oxidize. And then finally, just to make sure that the lock gate is indeed sturdy and strong, I'm going to be adding some dark oak signs at the top and the bottom. And that will really give it a look of a strong, sturdy gate that is meant to last a long, long time. And there we go. The first lock gate has been built and I really do like the way that it has turned out. So all I need to do now is build another three. Let's get on it. And we have built all of the lock gates. We have flooded the canal and the ships can now start coming into the harbor. I have also completed the walkways and given it a bit of a railing. So as you can see, the entire canal is now operational. Up top here, you'll see three levers. And if I flick this one, you will see that the canal starts flooding. Now, each of these levers controls one of the locks and we're going to build a little control house over here from where an operator will be able to flood and drain the locks and get the ships moving in and out of the harbor. So with that done, I now declare this canal open and we are ready to do business with the world. And no sooner had I declared the canal open when this idiot showed up with his absolutely massive boat and he's also got some unsavory characters on board. We told him the ship is too big to fit through the canal, but he was adamant that it would fit. And indeed, it does seem to fit, just barely. Now, I've done a bit of an inspection on the boat. There doesn't seem to be anything harmful on board, so we're letting him in. And as you can see down here, he's got an empty hold, which means he's here to buy a lot of goods. And that means great business for our economy. Now, I thought the ship looked slightly familiar, so I asked around a bit, and apparently it comes from a far-off land run by a company called Rexcorp. Now, I've never heard of them, but they are here to do business, so we will welcome them to our beautiful lands with open arms. And seeing that the foreign merchants are already arriving, I have put a rush order on the lock gatehouse. So even though we are building quickly, we are building with great diligence and this is going to be an absolutely beautiful house. Let's watch.
and the gatehouse is done complete with an interior and it is looking absolutely beautiful from every angle now all we need to do of course is find an operator qualified to work these locks and get the ships into the harbor safely if you have a cv please send it in and i will consider your application but let's take a look inside and this is the business end where the levers are that control the locks and flood and drain them you can see some gauges to keep an eye on the pressure everywhere and up top is where the new lock operator will be staying it might look simple but it is a beautiful little space to call home and with the merchants coming in it has become clear to me that our kingdom is also going to need its own ship a fast little merchant vessel that can carry all of our goods to all of the lands and to that end i have collected some materials and it is now time to get to work on our very own ship let's get to it And our boat is finally complete and she is a beauty small agile and quick as the wind she will carry all of our goods to all of the faraway lands in absolutely no time so with the trade routes and the connections we are building from the harbor it is only a matter of time before our kingdom is world famous but before that happens there is something that i've been meaning to do for the longest time and with our canal looking beautiful, our lock house being an absolute gem, and our very own flagship sitting in the harbor, I think it is finally time to tackle the next item on my list. And that, of course, is this massive ravine next to the warehouse. I've been putting it off because I know it's going to be a massive job, but I think the time has finally come to do something about this eyesore. First things first, I don't want mobs spawning everywhere, so I'm going to be placing a few torches around here before I get started. So let's light it up properly. Get a few torches right over here. One over here. And that should do it. Now it's time to start terraforming. And fortunately, all I'm going to be needing is a ton of dirt. And I've got plenty. So the tricky part will be to get this looking like it is a natural mountain. And for that, I'm going to start at the bottom. Lay down a few layers of dirt just to get some height on it and then I'll build a wireframe when I get to the top and that will be my guide to making it conform to the rest of the mountain. So first things first. And then I'm just going to take it up following the contour of the mountain as I go and even though I'm sure it's going to look hideous it gives us something to start off with and I can shape that and sculpt it into something that will look absolutely fantastic. So let's just get some more dirt in here and then I think let's pop down and see what we've created and yep, it's hideous. And we're almost at the top so I'm going to go up here and create the wireframe which will guide me into getting the right shape for this mountain. So I'm going to put one in here. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put another one right over here. Let's take it in this way and once more. And uh, okay, I'm one over that way too many. So there we go. Um, let's go on the other side and then we'll fill that up. And then we'll create a third one over there and then fill in the blank spots in between. So let's get this one in. And we've almost filled in the entire mountain. Just a few more blocks to go. And then we can shape and sculpt it a little bit. Just to get it looking like a natural Minecraft mountain. And not a hideous facade that we've put up to cover up something even more hideous. Which is exactly what it is. So just a few more blocks to go up here. And then we can get the top done as well. And all in all, I am quite happy with the result. It is looking not too shabby. 
And I think once the grass comes in, this will actually look really good. I might even put in some bushes cascading down the mountain just to give it a little bit of extra flair. However, from this side, it still looks absolutely terrible and I have no idea what I want to do here. Perhaps I'll make a giant cave entrance or something, but for now, my job here is just about done. So let's move on. And the next item on our list is, of course, Sheep Island over here. Now what I want to do is clear it off completely and then build a giant pedestal where we can put up a statue welcoming and greeting all of the travelers that come through the lock into the harbor. Of course, the first thing we need to do is a little bit of deforestation. And while that's never a good thing, in the world of Minecraft, it is sometimes necessary. So let's get rid of all these trees and then we're going to need to flatten off the top of the island terraform it a little bit and of course build it into a magnificent pedestal so let's jump into a time lapse and see the result And the base is finally ready, which means it is time to start building our statue. And of course, we are going to be building a giant sheep in honor of the sheep that used to live on this island. Now, in order to build a giant sheep, we are going to need tons and tons of wool. And if you need tons of wool, there's only one man to call. The following preview has been rated R for ridiculous. All he wanted was a simple life, but just when he thought he had got out, they pulled him back in. One man can never have enough, and so he must get more. Fungosaurus Rex is back, and he is facing his most perilous mission yet. In order to survive, he must face the danger, and he must take to the skies. Fungosaurus Rex in The Wool Ninja 2. A cut from above. Still never coming to theaters anywhere ever. And The Wool Ninja was indeed very, very successful, but he had a secret. He's got a wool farm over here with a bunch of sheep because you can only snip so much wool from wild sheep. And to build this sheep, I need an absolute ton of it. I need almost 2,000 blocks of white wool. Now, why am I not using my wool farm in the castle? Because it it's very slow. It sucks. I'm not close enough for it actually to be effective. And as a result, I needed to do something drastic. So I've been in here snipping wool for hours and hours on end and i think we just about have enough and we have the wool we have the platform to build it on so it's time to get busy and create a beacon that will welcome all the sailors into the harbor it is time ladies and gentlemen to build ourselves a giant sheep
And the sheep is complete. Say hello to Dolly. And Dolly will become an icon of our lands. The first thing that sailors see as they sail into the harbor. And the last thing they see before they depart. And we've done an absolute ton of building today. Starting off of course with our beautiful canal. Which is looking absolutely spectacular. Then of course we've also built the giant ship which is currently sitting in the canal. And... On top of the canal, we have built our beautiful lock control house, where the lock operator will live, where he will do his work, and where he will be guiding the ships in and out of the harbor, filling the locks, emptying the locks. It's an important job, and somebody has to do it. Hopefully among all the candidates clamoring for the position, we will find the most competent, the most brilliant, and the most dedicated worker to fill the position. Of course, we also built up the side of the mountain and with the grass coming in, it is starting to look quite lovely. I think some bushes over there will do just the trick. And in the harbor itself, we have constructed our merchant vessel. The gangplank is down, they are taking goods aboard as we speak and pretty soon it will set sail to far off lands to go and sell our wares, making a name for our kingdom as purveyors of the finest goods in all the lands. And then finally we have Dolly, the icon erected in memory of all the sheep that once called this island home. In today's episode, I start building a brand new jungle treetop village. I also ramp up production with a brand new automatic bamboo farm. And finally, I build a skeleton XP farm. So it's going to be another build packed episode and the best thing we can do right now is to jump straight in and get started. Oh yeah, I almost die. Twice. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Now I've been toying with the idea of building a jungle treetop village for quite some time now and I think the time has finally come to get started. The only problem is that I have not been treating this jungle very well in an ecological sense I have been harvesting trees and I haven't been doing a very good job of replanting them. So there's quite a few missing trees. We've also had some lava which has caused a bit of devastation to some of the trees around here. But that is something I'm trying to rectify right now. I'm going around and just planting some jungle saplings everywhere I go. For instance, I'm going to plant a big one over here and hopefully that will grow strong and tall and we can build our jungle village on top of that. Now while we're waiting for those to grow, let me give you a quick tour of what I have in mind. Over here we have this grand staircase coming up to this little landing over here. And from here it goes well, pretty much nowhere in either direction. It doesn't go to the castle really and it doesn't do much else. However, I was thinking perhaps if we extend this bridge, connect it to the mountain on the side here, then we would be able to connect the two villages together and sort of create a path carved through the mountain from the one to the other. So we could take a path up here and eventually it will land up over here somewhere. And from here it will lead into the jungle village. Now I am still waiting for a few trees to grow before I can get started on this. So let's do some chores in the meantime. And the first thing we need to do is go back to the end because I at the moment have a grand total of five shulker boxes and as you know I have just finished building a magnificent warehouse and I'm busy transporting most of my goods into the warehouse but with five shulker boxes at my disposal it is going very very slowly so I need to grab some more shulker shells make myself some more shulker boxes and in order to do that I need to go do some end bashing now I really, really despise the end, it is dangerous and I can see myself dying here very easily. But it's something we have to do, I'm not going to be able to get much done with just my five shulker boxes, so 
let's head into the portal and let's go raid another end city. Now this portal actually takes me close to two end cities. I went to the furthest one originally because it had the ship. So I think today I'm going to be raiding the closer one and... Okay, this one actually has a ship as well. I did not see that first time around. I was distracted by the one over there in the distance. But that means I can immediately grab myself another Elytra, which is absolutely brilliant. I might need that in the future because I seem to be breaking mine quite often. Um... Let's just get rid of Mr. Shulker over here. Uh, where is he gone? Let's grab the Elytra. And uh, he's right over here. So as soon as he pops out, we'll take care of him. And that's our first Shulker shell. Now, while we're floating around, let's quickly grab whatever is in these chests. We've got some gold, some iron. And oh, this is actually not bad. A few diamonds, quite a nice chest plate and some more iron. And now that we've got the goodies from the ship, we can start getting ourselves some shulker boxes. And I'm going to start at the tallest tower here and just work my way down. My plan is to get about 20 shulker shells, which will give me 10 shulker boxes. And I think that should be enough for me to get by. And yeah, it seems we're going for a little bit of a trip first, but no worries. I have Feather Falling 4 on my boots. I have my elytra. So this shouldn't hurt me in the slightest. So let's now make our way down and let's go get ourselves some shulkers. Oh, and it seems we found one already. Now, I really do think that they are the most annoying mobs in the game. If you have a mob that you think is more annoying, let me know. And it's been going quite well so far. At the moment, I think I have got about 16 shulker shells and that gives me eight boxes so far. So I just need four more shells and then we'll have enough to make our target of 10 shulker boxes. So first things first, let's get rid of all the rubbish I've gathered. And then let's make our way down this tower. Because I think there are a few more right at the bottom. And yeah, I can hear them already. And there is our first one. So let's just block that. And let's take care of him. And we are going up again. As I said, most annoying mob in the game. All right, we've got 17 shulker shells so far. We need three more. And as soon as I stop floating, I can collect that one over there, which will give us 18. And then I think there's about two or three more shulkers just around this corner. Let's quickly take care of this one. And no shell. How rude. But there's two more over here. And uh, I, I'm, I, oh, I might be in trouble. I might be in trouble. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get... Ah, uh, there's another one over there. Oh, no. No, no. Okay, that's it. That's it. I'm dead. And I must have just made it out of range because they did not fire me with that one last fatal bullet. But I've got 18 shells and I am getting the heck out. So fortunately, we made it back home alive and we have amassed quite a bit of loot from our trip to the end. We've got a bunch of diamonds. We've got some really awesome gear. But the sad part is that I probably will never use any of this because this is a hardcore world and any of the gear that I have on me when I die will be lost anyway because the entire world will be lost. Now, if this was a normal survival world, then maybe some of this gear might be handy. But right now, it is actually all totally useless to me. So now that I'm done flirting with death, it is time to get building once again and some of our trees have grown, which means we can start work on our jungle village. And the first bridge is going to be between the mountain over there and this very tree over here. Now what I want to do is I want to build some platforms on top of the trees and there's going to be all sorts of different sized platforms. So we're going to have some smaller ones, some larger ones, and then we're going to have sort of a rope type bridge spanning between all of the platforms. Now, I think right over here, we're going to have our first bridge. It's going to set the tone. So I need to make sure that I get this right. First things first, I need to go over to this tree over here and build the first platform. And that will give me a base from which to start building the bridge. Now, I'm going to take off the top layer of leaves over here just to get it closer to the trunk. I suppose I could have just built the trunk up a little bit as well, but it doesn't matter all that much. And I'm going to be using some jungle wood to build the bridges and the platforms because it is the most abundant wood that they would have had available in the jungle. 
and therefore I think they would have built most of the structure out of that. And our first bridge is looking absolutely horrible. I'm trying to get a nice sag to it, but at the moment that is just looking sad rather than sag. But no matter, I can fix it. So let's get this part out here and then I'm going to just start, maybe take it down a bit quicker and then have a longer bit sagging in the middle. So let's get some of this wood out of the way here. Maybe another one instead of two over there. Yeah, I think we need to take it down a little bit more steeply right here. So let's get busy and let's get this first section done. And the first bridge is done and I am finally happy with the sag. Just look at that. It feels brilliant to run across and we take a trip out. You will also notice that it looks rather nice from the side. It's got a nice sag to it. And overall, I am very, very happy with how it turned out. Now you can see the second tree has grown back there. And I think that one is going to have a bit of a bigger platform on it. So we've got a lot of platforms, a lot of bridges to build. And I think it's time that we get started on that. Now, if I were to show you every single block I placed, this video would take hours and hours to watch. So I think we're going to cut that down quite a bit and jump straight into a beautiful time lapse. Here we go. Let's build ourselves a village. And our village has been built and it's not quite as sprawling as I imagined it would be but it is a very good start. The beauty is of course we can just keep adding to it and grow and grow it until it becomes absolutely gargantuan. But I think this is a great start. Now in order to continue our village I will need to do something about my wood production because as you can imagine people building a village in a treetop will probably be using a lot of wood and being in a jungle I assume they would be using quite a bit of bamboo as well. Now the problem right now is that I have one little bamboo patch that I built right at the start of the series and I haven't really done much with it since. So I think it is time that I remedy that and to do that I am going to build myself an automatic bamboo farm. And the first thing I need to do over here is clear out some space and then get rid of some of this grass as well because grass can become really, really annoying when you're trying to build something. And I think this area here will become our farming area. Now I'm going to use some water to get rid of the grass because that seems to be the most effective. And we're just going to place a few buckets, get rid of most of the grass around here. And once that is done, we'll start building our bamboo farm. And I'm proud to say this is another one of my very own designs, which means it's probably going to be quite ineffective. But I don't care. It is mine and I love it. So let's get going. And first thing I'll do is just lay out the basic floor plan. And from there, I'll build it up and get everything I need in place. So once again, I think it might be time for us to speed up things with a little time lapse. And that didn't take long at all. We have a functioning bamboo farm with collection systems, harvesting systems, and I think we just need one more thing to finish this off. 
And that, of course, is some glowstone, as we need to get the right light levels on the bamboo in order for it to grow effectively. Now, of course, we had to come to the nether for that, and I am not very happy about it. So I'm going to gather as much glowstone as I can right now, and hopefully that'll mean that we don't need to come back here anytime soon. So I'm just going to grab all of this, and that should be enough to last me a while. And with our glowstone collected, we can finally get out of here and just in time because here comes a very angry piglin. And angry piglin has followed me through, but that's alright. We'll just take care of... Dude, whoa, dude, why are you so freaking strong? What the heck? Seriously, why is he so strong? That almost killed me again. No matter, I'll get him with my... That's a zombie, where did he go? Hang on a second, do piglins turn into zombies when they come into the overworld? It seems like it, because he's got the same boots, the same sword. Okay, well, that is new knowledge for me. But no matter, he's a zombie now, so he won't be hunting me down anymore. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, we can get back to building. And this is what we got the glowstone for. We need to raise the light levels in here. I'll have to check it at the bottom to see if it is actually correct. But all in all, our bamboo farm is now complete. And I've been running around down here, lighting up the caverns beneath our bamboo farm when I came across this. Now, my first thought was it must be something that I built because this is quite close to the canal. But then I heard the absolute clatter of bones. And that can mean only one thing. We have a skeleton spawner, and that is absolutely brilliant. I've been looking for one of these for a while because this is going to solve all of my bone meal problems. So first things first, let's get busy. Let's dig out a spawning chamber for these guys. We'll need to go four in each direction, two above and four below. So that's a lot of digging we have to do, but there's absolutely no doubt that it's going to be worth it. And we've dug out the spawning chamber, so the next thing we need to do is construct the drop. But before we get there, I have been looking at this cavern, and I think this could be absolutely beautiful if we sort of create a natural area over here. Maybe put a wall in over here. And then on the spawner side, we'll have the business end. We'll have some crafting tables, some anvils, etc., etc., and some storage. And on the other side, we'll have a beautiful natural cavern with some glowberries hanging from the ceiling, perhaps a tree or something like that. We can add some moss. And I'm really getting excited about the spawner because not only is it going to be functional, it's going to be beautiful. And there we go. Just look at that. This is the natural cavern area. We've got our tree in there. We've got plenty of glowberries. And here is the drop that brings the skeletons down from the surface and drops them into the chute where we can harvest them. And of course, on the other side, we have the business end. We've got an anvil, we've got some smelters, and we've got plenty of storage over here as well. And we've got the spawner in there. And I noticed something very interesting. If we take a look down there at the floor, you will notice that there seems to be some water missing over there. However, if we hop onto the chest over here, the water disappears altogether, and if we move this way, then the water is visible on the left-hand side, but not on the right, and that is because this line here is actually a chunk border, and it creates a very interesting visual glitch. Over here, we have a little hidey hole where I can come in AFK, because I've built the farm to not only be an XP farm, but an AFK item farm as well. So, if we go over to the chute, I will show you exactly what happens. If we look in here, we've got a lever and oh, we've got some skeletons down there. But this lever will switch between an XP farm and an AFK item farm. And sometimes, yes, some skeletons do survive because they've got some armor on or something and the drop isn't quite far enough. However, this also gives us the opportunity to have some fun because with a simple flick of this lever over here, I can simply squash them. And there we go. Just look at that. All squashed up. And now, of course, the farm is set to XP farm mode. And we can stand here, simply whack them. They're all one hit kill. And if we open that up, most skeletons will drop down far enough to die upon impact. And then we have a simple item farm. Now, what happens to the items that these skeletons drop? I'm very, very glad you asked because down here, if we go into this little chamber, I have set up 
a fully automated sorting and storage system over here. We have some bones and as you can see, it's already being very effective. We've got the arrows separated and these chests will hold all of the other additional junk. So with that, we have got quite a lovely little farm going over here. And I really do think it looks fantastic. We've got the natural cavern on that side. We've got the business end on this side with all of the barrels, the storage, the anvil and the furnaces. In today's episode, I fix a hole. I attend an important meeting. And I finish the bamboo farm. And of course, there's a few other things that I want to get done as well. So, let's get started. And the first thing I want to work on today is something that's been bothering me for quite a while. I fly over it just about every day and every time I look at it, I cringe because it's nasty, it's horrible and I'm going to take care of it right now. And I am of course referring to the ravine. So I've got myself a shulker box full of dirt and that should be enough to cover up this entire thing. It is of course going to take quite a while to do it. So I think the best thing to do would be to jump into a time lapse and speed things up a bit. Let's go. And finally the ravine has been covered up, the eyesore is gone and already I can think of quite a few things that I would like to do here. And first and foremost in my mind is of course a little bit of a lake. And it's going to look beautiful because with a lake in place we can also build a little bridge going from the bamboo side to the mushroom and that's going to be absolutely fantastic. But first there's something I need to attend to because while I was busy covering up the ravine some mail arrived and I have been called to a meeting. And the meeting request came from a certain Mr. Green who lives in a faraway land and it's going to take me some time to get there. So I've hopped onto the plane and I am heading over there right now. Now Mr. Green wants to speak about my bamboo farm because apparently he is very knowledgeable about bamboo and he has great experience in the field of bamboo. So we're heading over there to see him and to hear what he has in mind. I'm sure anything he has to say will only benefit us both. So let's just check in on this village quickly because I haven't seen it before and uh, nothing really interesting here. So let's carry on because we certainly do not want to keep Mr. Green waiting. I'm sure he can make our bamboo form a resounding success. So let's head over there and let's go hear what he has to say. And I do believe this is Mr. Green's office right here. And this certainly does take the concept of open plan offices to a whole new level. And that's the big man himself right over there, Mr. Green. So let's just go in here. Now apparently I have to observe the customs. I have to give him a gift as I arrive. And um, oh, then I have to take my seat over here. So let's get seated. I can see why they call him Mr. Green with a, a nose like that. And apparently Mr. Green doesn't say much, but as long as he's not speaking to you, you are still in his good books. As soon as he starts yelling, you are in trouble. And oh, Mr. Green really does like my gifts. So let's get talking some business because the sun is already going down and we still have much business to discuss. So Mr. Green, sir, if you would, please tell me about your plan for my bamboo farm and how we can use it to build a great, great success. And it seems that Mr. Green is very silent. He must be pondering very hard and I think he is about to rock my world with the greatest plan ever. 
And once we got talking, Mr. Green laid out his entire plan. He wants to acquire a stake in my bamboo farm, and in return, he will provide me with some of his special knowledge about growing bamboo and making bamboo a viable crop. So I'm going to go home and I'm going to await some correspondence from Mr. Green. He said it would arrive shortly. Ooh, and I do believe that is the mailman. Let's go see if we have received a package. I do hope that's from Mr. Green. And yes, we have a package and inside we have a business proposal, which is excellent news indeed, because it means Mr. Green is interested. So let's see what he has to say. Esteemed Mr. Rex. Hey, that's me. I'm esteemed. Anyway. Thank you for the very agreeable meeting. I do believe that we have much we can offer each other. Your generous gifts and great knowledge of our customs has warmed my heart, and I do believe we can build a partnership. I will soon send plans for the new bamboo farm. However, you will first have to demolish the mess that currently occupies the land. That's a bit harsh, but fair. It is a bit of a mess at the moment. I can't deny that. Anyway, let's continue. Keep an eye out for further correspondence, which will include a list of materials you will need to procure in order to build our vision. Regards, Mr. Green. Well, that is absolutely brilliant news. So let's get started straight away and let's take care of that eyesore that Mr. Green is concerned about because, yeah, well, you'll see. And here we are, and there is the mess that Mr. Green is referring to. Uh, I tried to build something to make it fancy, and I thought of using a lot of bright colors, and, uh, well, yeah. As you can see, it hasn't really worked out very well for me so far, so I'm excited to see what Mr. Green has in mind. But first, we need to do what he says, and we need to take down this abomination that I've created here. Now, of course, I'm going to leave the farm itself intact because that's actually not been doing too badly. It's producing a few bamboo. I've used a lot of it already. But let's get started and let's tear this thing down. And there we go. We have torn down what we have created and we are ready to start again. I've left the base because I think that'll be a good platform to start from, but I am very excited to see what Mr. Green has in mind. Now, of course, we still have the farm standing as it is, and uh, let's just grab this piece of terracotta over there. And sometimes you just need to retrace your steps, take a look at what you've done, judge it, and then decide that it's simply not good enough. So when... Uh, ow! So when Mr. Green sends over the plans, we can get started, and I think this time we'll have something that's going to look fantastic. And yes, we have received some mail, and I do believe this is the plans. Let's see what Mr. Green has to say this time. Esteemed Mr. Rex, <laughs> I am pleased to hear that the old mess has been demolished. Okay, you can stop with the old mess now. I know it was bad, and I have taken care of it. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to hear that the old mess has been demolished and our bamboo farm is ready for its brand new image. Please find attached a list of materials and plans for our proud new venture. I look forward to seeing it all come together and will be in touch shortly. Regards, Mr. Green. So now that we've got our list of materials and we have our plans, it is time to get gathering, get everything we need, and then we can start building our new bamboo farm. And I've read the list of materials that Mr. Green sent through, and I thought most of the things that we need we'll be able to get in our beautiful warehouse over there. But no, unfortunately not. We need to go over there. We need to go into the nether because quite a few of the materials that we need can only be found in the nether. And I'm not very excited about the prospect because the nether is where I usually die. But hopefully this time we can get in, get what we need, and get out without any incident. So, nothing to do but head through the portal and get collecting. Now the first thing I'm going to need is some warped stem, but I'm not going to collect that in the nether itself. I'm going to do this the big brain way. I'm going to get myself some warped fungus, I'm going to get myself some warped nylium, and then I'm going to cultivate it in the overworld. 
Now there's quite a few warped fungus available in these forests, so I'm going to grab as much as I possibly can, avoid the enderman over there, and then I'm going to grab some warped nilium, and once I've got those, I will go and collect the rest of the materials. Now, here we go. These are plentiful over here. So let's just grab up as much of these as we possibly can get our hands on. And I think there's just one or two more over on this side. Now, the other two materials that I need is some basalt and plenty of blackstone. Now, I do know that you can build a basalt generator, but I don't think you can generate blackstone. I think you have to find it naturally occurring in the nether, which really sucks because I've been playing around with it a little bit, and it is actually a beautiful block to work with. However, I've got a nice little patch over here, so I can collect all of this blackstone over here, and that should give me more than I would need for this build, and quite a bit to spare. So let's just gather up all of this. I will collect some of the basalt seeing as I'm already here while I'm busy mining the blackstone. And that means I won't have to build a generator for that just yet. But maybe in the future it might be needed. And I think that is all the blackstone and basalt that I'm going to need. So once again I am getting the heck out of the nether. And as you can see, my special little patch of blackstone isn't too far from the portal at all. And this time, I've got my golden helmet on and there's no piglins that are going to be following me through. And now that we've got our warped fungus in hand, it's time to start cultivating our warped stem. And the first thing I need to do is level out a bit of an area over here and this is where we're going to be doing our farming. Next thing, we're laying down some warped nilium. And then we are ready to put down our warped fungus. And finally, courtesy of our beautiful new skeleton farm, we've got plenty of bone meal to make these warped fungus grow big and tall. And then all that's left to do is harvest our warped stem. And we're getting plenty of it. And we've also got a ton of warped wart blocks. We've got quite a bit of warped stem. And as a bonus, we also collected a few shroom lights in the process. Not too shabby. So all that's left to do now is collect the remaining materials on our list. And there's just a few that we don't have yet. So let's get going. Let's grab those materials. And the first is some cherry wood. We're going to need plenty. And then of course, we also need some strip cherry. We need some acacia wood. A good chunk of birch wood. We also need a ton of light grey dye because we need them to dye wool to make some banners. And then finally, we need a lot of white concrete. And uh, why, why, did, why did I jump down? I needed to mine it from the top, so... Oh well, okay, let's just enjoy the ride down and then we'll fly back up. And let's play a game. Let's see if we can nail this landing first time all right here we go and yes nailed it so let's get mining let's collect this white concrete and then ladies and gentlemen let's get building
And finally, our bamboo farm is complete. And it is looking absolutely spectacular. I love the little pond we've got going there. I love the big cherry tree. But most of all, I love the building itself. It's a style that I've never built in before. And I've used quite a few different techniques that I haven't dabbled in before either. I tried to go with a gradient from the pink at the bottom all the way to the white at the top and then on the roof themselves I've also used that black stone, deep slate and stone grading and I think this has turned out phenomenally well. Just look at it. And let's take a quick tour from ground level. Firstly the pond over here, we've got some lily pads, we've got some cattails over there in the water and then we've got our beautiful little bridge going over to here where we've got the cherry tree which is looking beautiful and of course the farm itself and if we go inside you'll see we've got a little bit of a zen garden here just to keep the energy right and keep the bamboo growing and then i've also noticed that we are currently on day 1900 and 72 which means in the next episode we will probably hit 2000 days now you've probably noticed a change in tone in the introduction of this video and there is a good reason for that the same reason that this video took a little bit longer to make than some of my previous videos. Over the past few weeks, I've been reading a lot of comments not only on my own videos but on other videos and forums as well and it has made me think about my approach to all of this. Because somewhere along the line, I got caught in the trap of trying to outdo myself week after week, building something more fantastic and more impressive each time. And in doing that, I might have lost sight of the reason why I started playing Minecraft in the first place. I forgot to focus on the joy of playing the game that I love, the joy of building, and the joy of bringing life to something that once only lived as a thought in my head. And without realizing it, playing Minecraft and making videos had become a chore. But today I aim to rectify that, and once again, Enjoy the simple process of building, and I hope you do too. So if you were expecting something phenomenal and massive today, you are unfortunately out of luck. I'm going to spend this entire episode just working on this area over here, and I'm just going to make something beautiful. As I've mentioned before, I was thinking about making a lake here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So first things first, I'm going to need to simply build out this little area over here. And then I'm going to add the wall for the lake on this side. And I just want to give it a nice little curve, make the edges pleasant to look at. And that means I need to do some shaping to this end over here. And I'm going to need to take away a little bit of dirt here. And then see if I can give it a lovely little curve. That's a little bit too much, but that should look a lot better. Now let's just fill up this area. And there we go, it is ready for the second part of the process. And that is of course making it a little deeper because I don't think you can call a one meter deep puddle of water a lake. So we need it to be at least two meters deep. However, that presents its own problem because I was a little bit lazy and I only put one layer of dirt over this ravine. And that means we need to dig it up and then replace it with a new layer of dirt. So. Let's get that done. And now that our lake is a mind boggling two meters deep, it's time for the water. I've got two buckets. I can just place them like that and then use the infinite water source they create to do the rest. But it's still a bit of a process and I'm swimming against the tide with every step. However, I'm sure we'll get this done in no time. And once this is done, we can do the top layer as well. And there we go. The bottom layer has finally been done and it's time to move on to the top layer. Now this thing is doing something a little weird because if you place two water sources next to each other, it's supposed to create 
an infinite water source between them. And as you can see, it simply isn't doing that. Now, I assume it's got something to do with Minecraft hydrodynamics, but it does mean I'm going to have to place every one of these buckets manually. Let's go. And the water has all been placed and next thing I need to do is a little bit of terraforming. I've already done a little bit at the top, but right over here I need to cover up this monstrosity of a hole. And I think what I really need to do is make a sort of cave entrance here so that we can still get into the cave down there and then I can perhaps decorate it with some dripstone, some glowberries, etc, etc and make it look awesome down there as well. But first, let's just bring this out, match it up with the terrain around it. And there we go. That part is all done. We might still need to do a little bit of terrain work around the sides, but so far it is looking pretty good. And the main part of the lake is ready to go. And next comes the awesome part, which is, of course, transforming this boring little body of water into something absolutely fantastic. But to do that, I'm going to need a bunch of materials and I am back at my warehouse because firstly, I need to stow this mass of dirt that I have accumulated and then I need to decide what exactly I want to do with this lake. I already have an idea that's going to involve some mossy cobblestone, some wood. I need to build a bridge, of course, and I'll see what else I can find. And with most of my materials collected, I now need to do a little bit of landscaping over here because I want to make a road that will come from this direction and that will lead sort of to the middle of the lake where I plan to build my bridge. And this is where the bridge is going to sit right over here, matching up with a mushroom on the other side. But that means I will need to take some dirt off the top here as well. So let's just shave away a few blocks over here. But of course, not too much. And finally, I can start building the bridge itself and I'm going to use some slabs. I'm going to see if I can make a nice little bridge curving up pleasantly over the water. And I think I want to make this about five blocks wide. So there we go. That's a good start. I'm just going to do half a curve on this side, see what it looks like. And if I like what I see, I will replicate it on the other side. So let's take a look at what we've got so far. And that is looking pretty good. So let's replicate that on the other side. And there we go, the full bridge curve has been built and I think that is quite a nice curve indeed. So let's just get rid of the extra blocks. And that is a lovely looking curve indeed, I really do like it. It goes up nicely on the side, a little bit flat at the top and then a nice drop on the other side again. However, having looked at this for a while, I have some concerns. Unfortunately, I think that this bridge curves up a little bit too high which means it's going to end up looking bulky it's going to be out of scale and unfortunately i think that i might need to tear this down and try again so if you do like this take a good last look because all of it is about to disappear and it's gone now we start again and this time i'm going to do a little bit more of a gentle slope so i'm going to go twice as long on the blocks here and there we go. I think I've got it right this time. It doesn't go up quite as high. It's still got a nice pleasing curve to it. Not as nice as the previous one, but I think this is much better for what we want to do here. So let's get started on the bridge itself. But in order to do that, I need a bit more materials. And the main thing I'm going to need is some birch. Tons and tons of birch. Of course, that means repairing my elytra, repairing my axe, and every single time, this remains terrifying. Just imagine if these guys got loose. I don't think I would last two seconds. That is a lot of very angry piglins, but hey, they get the job done. And we're back, and we survived the piglins, so we are back to collecting another ton of birch. And with birch in hand, we can finally start 
building our bridge. And I think what I want to do is just start off putting some trim on the ends, see what that looks like, and then go from there. I'm not sure this is going to look very good, to be honest, because the slabs versus the blocks cause a little bit of a mismatch. But let's give it a shot. Let's see what it looks like, and then we can decide what we want to do. So I'm going to take it all the way over to this end. Let's just get rid of that one. And then we'll step back and take a look. And as it turns out, it looks like a certain famous redstoner's mustache fell off and turned yellow. So we're going to have to go with slabs. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, get rid of this. And having replaced it with slabs makes it look a ton better. However, it has also pointed out another mistake I made. And that is that if I add one block to both sides, this is going to be too wide. So we need to tear everything down that we just did, remove one block from both sides of the bridge and then replace the slabs on the sides. And we are done and it is looking absolutely glorious. I really, really do like the way that this is shaping up. So we now have the bridge and it's time to do a little bit of decoration and I'm going to start with some fence posts because of course this bridge is going to need a roof so let's just get a few of those in there one on this side as well and then we can start adding the roof if i can click on the right spot there we go all right and that is looking not too shabby at all however i don't know if i want to add a solid wooden roof over the thing because i think that will just make it look clunky and feel a bit top heavy but i've got another idea and that is to make a living roof. Yes, I'm going to add some leaves. I'm going to add some moss blocks, perhaps punch a few holes in it to give it some air coming through. And then I'll also mix in some flowering azalea leaves just to add a little bit of color. And I think this is going to look absolutely fantastic. But first, let's get this out of the way. That's better. And then let's get this filled up to give us a base to start from. And we've made some progress. I've added in a few moss blocks, but I think I need to disperse them a little bit better between the leaves. So let's take out some of the ones on this side. And there we go. This is already looking better. Now, the next thing I want to do is a little bit of decoration. And for that, I'm going to be using some birch fence gates. And we'll add some up here as well. And that is looking pretty good. I ran out of fence gates, but we get the idea. And it seems that the pillager convention is in town because that is certainly a lot of pillagers. And it looks like they're trying to steal my boats as well. But fortunately, I've got some gear locks on them. So let's leave them be and get back to building. Now, what I've done is I've added a little bit of dark oak to the sides just to give it some trim, a bit of a different color of wood in here. So the next thing I'm adding is some support pillars. And I think about four of them ought to do it. And yes, that is looking absolutely glorious. We've got our support pillars in. We've got some moss hanging from the bottom of the bridge. And we've got some lights. And just look at that. Walking over the bridge to our mushroom is indeed a very pleasant experience. And our bridge is almost done. Just one or two more things to do. And I'm going to add a few red banners just to give it a pop of color and break away from the wood tones. And next, it's time to start working on the lake itself. As you can see, I've already used some bone meal to get some seagrass growing in the water. And then I'm just going to add some sugarcane around the side just to give it a nice overgrown and wild feeling. However, it's going to be far from wild. It's going to be beautifully landscaped and pristinely manicured. But once again, I need something that I don't have. And in order to get that, I need to head down into the... Okay, not the chimney, not the chimney. Oh my goodness, this chimney is dangerous. Who would have thought that falling down a chimney could possibly hurt you? Anyway, let's try that again. I'm heading down into the mines because I need some string. And the only place that I know of to find string is in the mine shafts. Now, I thought I had cleaned out this mine shaft, but fortunately, I discovered that there are two additional layers to this mine shaft, which I have not even touched yet, which is very good news indeed. Let's just take care of this guy. 
And with string in hand, I was able to make what I needed. And that is, of course, some brown candles. Because brown candles on some green glass makes a beautiful cattail. And I really do think that I need to make a spider farm at some stage because my string supply is running very, very low. Anyway, let's uh, let's place it in the right spot this time. There we go. And I think perhaps maybe what I want to do is make this one one taller than the one in front of it. And then let's try and get our candle on top. There we go. And I must say, these cattails really do look fantastic. I'm going to add a few more. And that was my last brown candle, unfortunately, which means the cattails are done. And just look at them. They look absolutely gorgeous. And with the cattails done, it's time to start adding some rocks around the place and nothing better for that than some mossy cobblestone slabs. Now I prefer doing this with slabs because it allows you to just build a much more organic looking rock. And with the rocks in place, it's time to add some bushes. And here we go, one over here. Let's add a few more bushes over there. And it seems that the pillager convention is finally done, which is good news because I was afraid they're going to bother me and I need to do some work. The next thing I want to do is add some coarse dirt around the little path I've made here. And eventually I'm going to try and hook up this path to the bamboo farm at the bottom. But first we'll decorate here. And then the next thing I'll add is some lily pads and just look at that. However, I think the pond can do with a little bit more plant life. But that will have to wait for a minute because the next thing I want to do is build a path from the pond which links up all the way with the main road going to the village over here. And of course that means I am going to need to take down all of my dark oak trees. It also means that I'm going to need to do a little bit of terraforming in this area and that might take a little bit of time. So let's skip ahead and do this super quick with a time lapse. And the path is looking amazing. Just look at all the trees, the bushes, the rocks. I've got some grass growing. I've got some bamboo fences up here. And this is absolutely beautiful. And I think it makes the perfect transition from the hustle and bustle of the town to the tranquility of the giant mushroom back there. And just look at the pond. I've added some big drip leaf. I've added some small drip leaf. And if you look carefully, you might spot a fish or two in there. Overall, I have enjoyed this build immensely and even though it's not massive and impressive, it is looking absolutely beautiful. And of course the bridge with its little pop of red, the different shades of wood and the lanterns is looking gorgeous. And the living roof is just the cherry on top of a magnificent cake. And this bridge serves as the perfect gateway to the magical mushroom growing back there. And I promise one day I'm going to get the interior of that done as well. But unfortunately, it is not going to be today. Because that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the time I have for this episode. And unfortunately, we did not quite make it to that magical 2000 day mark. Instead, we are currently sitting on... 1,996 days, which pretty much guarantees in the next episode, we're gonna hit 2,000 days. And that gives us something to look forward to. Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. My name is Fungosaurus Rex and in the previous episode we were quickly heading to reaching 2000 days. We didn't make it however, we are still on day 1996 which means in this episode 
we are sure to reach that fantastic milestone. But let's get into the action and let's start building. So last time out, we built this amazing pond over here and it is looking absolutely fantastic. However, the same can't really be said for this area down here. It is still looking a bit wild, it is still a bit of a mess, so we're going to be focusing on sorting all of this out today. And the first thing we need to do is level the ground here, get rid of all of these trees that are in the way, and then we can start building something amazing, something to complement both the mushroom and the bamboo farm. But first, let's sleep. And, oh goodness, where did you come from? No, 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 get away. Ah, goodness, I am absolutely making a hash out of that. Anyway, no harm really done. Let's get rid of these trees and then we can start working on the area around it. Now, I've got a few awesome ideas for this. I want to make a little waterfall, perhaps a water stream crossing the path where I can make a little bridge for it. But first, we need to do the grind and that is, of course, chopping some wood, digging out some dirt, and getting everything in order for when we actually want to start building. Now fortunately I've taken care of most of the trees around you already, there's just one or two left, but don't worry, I'm not going to deforest this entire area and not bring them back. I plan on doing some custom trees, and I think once this is done, this will look amazing. So let's get this last little stump over here, and then we can start working on this hillside. I want to make it look a little bit more natural, a little bit more streamlined, and that means I'm going to have to do quite a bit of terraforming to get the shape of this hill just right. So what I have in mind is to have the start of the waterfall up top here by the mushroom, and then the water would cascade all the way down the hill, rolling and rolling as it goes, until it reaches the pond here at the bottom by the bamboo farm. And perhaps we could take this area over here, create a bit of a cliff, and then have another little waterfall come down here. But there's a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. And we interrupt our regular scheduled terraforming for some breaking news. It is day 1999 and the sun is going down. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, if we put down this bed and go to sleep, we will wake up and it will be day 2000. And I never thought I would see this, but here we go. And there we have it, it is finally day 2000 and I cannot believe what we have managed to create in that time. From the castle on top of the mountain to Dolly the sheep in the harbour and everything in between, I am extremely proud of what this world has become. I think it is looking absolutely phenomenal, however, we are not quite done just yet. There's still more work to be done, so let's get back to it. And the next thing I need to do is, of course, work on the path that leads down to the bamboo farm. And my idea is quite simply to grab my shovel, make some path blocks, and see where that takes me. Later on, I will grab some slabs and use them to make the path going down nice and smooth. However, for now, I'll just continue. Ooh, I did not double dirt that. I think I need to take care of that. As you can see, I've made a bit of an entrance to the cave down here, which allows us to come in and do some work around here as well. And I'm out of dirt. Just hang on one moment. We are back and we have more dirt. And as soon as I covered that up, it became really dark in here. So in addition to the dirt, I also need to place down some torches to keep the monsters from spawning. And that should do it. And now that we have an entrance into the cave, we can also go and decorate the interior of it. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Right now, I have to lay down some awesome paths and I think we'll do that with a time lapse. Thank you. 
and shaping these paths just right is a bit of a hassle but we got there eventually now I want to create another little path right over here leading to the other side of the bamboo farm so we've got two ways of approaching it but that's not the only reason I want to make this path this area is a little bit empty and this path really is here to help fill it out a bit and there we go that took a lot longer than I anticipated because I had to make the staircase going down to the bamboo farm as well and that turned out to be a little bit more tricky than I thought it would be but it turned out pretty well next thing i want to take care of is this area over here next to the monolith now this is of course the pipe coming up from our skeleton farm and it is looking a little bit out of place which means i need to decorate it and try and get it to blend in with the rest of the scenery and i think the way i'm going to do that is by making a little pond around it so we'll have the monolith in the center perhaps turn it into a fountain of sorts i'm not entirely sure just yet but we've got the basic shape of the pond laid out perhaps just shave off one or two more blocks over here and then we are ready to add some water and there we go we have a pond and i've added a bucket of water to the top of the monolith as well and um, that did not go quite as i had planned but we'll fix that later but we've also done some work on the path itself and as you can see We've added some stones, we've added some bushes, and we've added some bamboo fencing all around. And then we've also sprinkled in a little bit of coarse dirt. And that means we are ready to move on to our next project, which is the waterfall. So the first thing I need to do is dig out a basic shape for the water to follow. And once that is done, we'll add the water and we will, of course, give it a little bit of decoration as well. And once again, we're going to be using some stones, some mossy stones. And then we're going to take it across the road. There'll be a lovely little bridge. And finally, it'll cascade down at the bottom into the pond by the bamboo farm. And once this waterfall is done, I have no doubt it's going to look spectacular. And the waterfalls are done and they are looking absolutely fantastic. As you can see, we've split them into two down here, but there's still something missing from this picture and I think I know exactly what that is. I am of course talking about some trees, some custom trees, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some fences, I'm going to build the bare bones of the tree and then just add some leaves on top of that. I'm not going to build them too big or too fancy. I'm just going to do something basic, something natural, and we'll see how exactly that goes. So first things first, let's lay out the branches with some fences. And to be honest, I'm not working with any kind of a plan, but we've got the branches in place and now it's time to add the leaves. And I'm just going to sprinkle them onto the tips here and cover most of the branches that I can see with some leaves. So let's get a few more up top here, one over there, one over there, and then a few more on this side just cover up all of these branches get it looking nice and lush and we're on to the next tree and this is going to be an oak tree i know these fences don't really resemble what the bark of these trees really look like but i'm not going to be worried about getting it looking 100 percent realistic once again i don't really have a plan i'm just laying out some branches trying to create what my brain is telling me an oak tree would look like and the branches are done which means it is time for some more leaves we're going to do the same as we did on the birch tree and just spam some leaves onto these branches and hope that it turns out well and in my humble opinion it turned out very well just look at these two they look absolutely brilliant however i think there needs to be more a lot more
and the trees are looking absolutely phenomenal. This entire area is turning out to look brilliant. As you can see, we've got some mist coming from the waterfall there where it crashes to the ground. And my favorite part of this entire build is the big dark oak tree with its different colored leaves and an old trunk. Just look at it. But it's getting dark and that means we need to install some lighting. Now I've already added some jack-o'-lanterns under some mossy carpet all over the place. But I want to add a little bit of light to the path as well. And I'm going to be using some dark oak fences just to create a little bit of contrast with the diorite walls and the bamboo fencing. So let's install another one over here. One more on top of that and then we add the lantern. And let's take a look at what we've created. It looks pretty awesome. However, it needs a little bit of light over here. I think I'm just going to add the lantern there just for something a little bit different. And I really don't like that. So let's take down the lantern and let's give it a proper lamp. There we go. And the path is looking phenomenal, but there's one last thing that we need to do. And that is add just a little bit of bamboo in all of the empty spaces just to fill it out and make it look a little bit fuller. So let's just bone meal these, get them growing. Eventually I'll grab some string and tie them down. But for now, they have to grow wild. And there's one more over here. And I think that just about does it for this area. And that brings us to our next project. And that's going to be happening right here at the old bamboo farm. Now all of this bamboo has been scheduled for demolition because this area has been designated for something else. So first things first, let's chop down all of the bamboo and there is an absolute ton of it still growing here. And with the bamboo cleared out, we can get to work. Because what I want to build here is a stable for chicken horse. We've been neglecting the poor animal far too long. And I want to build it in the same style as my original starter house, which means I need to collect the most annoying wood in Minecraft. Yes, ladies and gents, I have to collect a bunch of mangrove. And with our mangrove collected, we can start working. We've got all the materials we need. And the first thing we need to do is take down the existing fence. Once that is done, we can frame it out with some oak wood. And then from there, we will fill in the details and make it look absolutely awesome. So let's take down the fence. And then let's put up the frame. I'm going to start right over here. I'm going to take it up about four or five blocks. Let's move to the other side. We will do the same and then we'll continue and build the entire frame. And the frame is pretty much built and this is looking like a good sized stable. I think Chicken Horse will have plenty of space. And now that we have the basic design for the stables laid out, let's start filling in the details. And I have made a colossal blunder. Instead of building this entire stable an uneven amount of blocks, I have built it an even amount. Now initially it didn't bother me too much, but once I got the roof in and everything set up, it was looking terrible. And that meant I had to tear down half of the stable and I am in the process of rebuilding it. But it's a small price to pay to have something that I'm actually happy with, instead of something that I will be forever regretting. So let's carry on.
and we are almost done the only thing left to do is install the roof and then we can move chicken horse into his new home and i think this is turning out to look pretty awesome indeed i'm very happy that i did tear it down and rebuild it because it didn't take me all that long and i never would have been happy with the original results so let's finish installing this roof and once that is done I think all that's left to do is a few decorations, maybe a little wall around the outside, a nice entrance, and then I just want to add a few touches like a water trough and a workstation for the farrier. So let's use some editing magic. And the stables are complete and they are looking fantastic. And with that done, I think it is time to move Chicken Horse into his brand new home. I think I've got a little bit too much grass over there, so let's just take care of that. And maybe one or two less over there. And overall, I am extremely happy with the way that this stable has turned out. And I do think I have achieved my goal of making it match my original starter house. I mean, look at that and look at that. They definitely look like they were built by the same builder. So let's move the horse. And Chicken Horse is indeed very, very happy in his new stable. However, he has informed me that he is feeling just a little bit lonely. So I have promised him that I will go out and I will find him a friend. And I have scoured the plains looking for the perfect friend for Chicken Horse. And it really should not have been this hard. He is not really picky at all. I mean, geez, the guy made friends with chickens. But I think I have finally found his perfect friend and look at this magnificent beast and oh he's a wild one all right let's try that again and nope and i've given up on that one however i have found an exact duplicate of him only better and i have already tamed him i mean look at the heart on this beast what a magnificent animal he is an absolute tank and I think that will be his name as well. I am going to call him Tank. And we are going to ride Tank home right now. And here we go, Tank. Your new home awaits. Let's get you into your stable. And then let's just close up here so you can't run away. But I think you'll be very happy here next to Chicken Horse. And just look at the two of them being all shy. But I'm sure they'll be great friends in no time. And of course, Tank is going to need a name tag. So... Let's make our way over to our name tag suppliers. And we are back and we have a name tag. Here we go. Everybody say hello to Tank. We've also named Chicken Horse, but we shortened his name to Chorse. It was my wife's idea, so nobody's allowed to say anything about it. Anyway, we have got a ton of work done today. The area down by the bamboo farm is looking magnificent and the horses have a stable. All in all, a great day's work. The stables are looking magnificent and against the backdrop of the mushroom, it is quite a picturesque sight. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. I really do hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a like if you did and if you want to see some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying until next time beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye bye. Thank you.